keeps misstating. She continues to lie to the jury. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not misstating that one. She continues to lie and misstate the evidence. Mr. Chu, Wackadoodle Spiegel did not say that. <laughs> we saw the jurors earlier and they're talking about jigsaw puzzles. I didn't think. Mr. Chu, as long as there's no Aquaman, the court, Aquaman or Pirates of the Caribbean. Mr. Chu, those were okay. Now we are on day... What day is this? Day 23, May 25th, 2022. We're at the beginning of the trial day. Ah, oh, so at this point, we have a lot of rebuttal witnesses coming up. Um, we have Kate Moss, we have Beverly um, Leonard, who I thought whose testimony was a little bit confusing because when Beverly Leonard testified, she didn't mention that she was a police officer and she didn't mention that she was the one that arrested Amber Heard. So I was like, I was like, I don't know if the jury even understood what the importance of her testimony was. I mean, she did say she witnessed Amber Heard, um, I think, hitting her ex-girlfriend at the time. But it would have been more powerful if she was like, oh, I was actually the arresting officer. But they weren't allowed to bring that in, actually. So now we know why. Um, reading all the sidebars, now we understand why there were certain limitations on certain testimonies, why certain things weren't brought up, and why people couldn't say certain things um, that us in the background are like, why can't they say this? Why, why was the testimony so short? Like, why didn't Jennifer Howell mention this? Why didn't she mention that? So now we know. Uh, that's why reading the sidebars are reading the sidebars is pretty cool. Okay. Sidebar number two, we have Beverly Leonard and Kate Moss. I think this one's kind of long. <sighs> Ooh, how long is it? 13. Sidebar number. Where's that where's sidebar at? Why is there so many sidebars? Where's sidebar number one? All right, so these are the easy ones. Okay, so Mr. Roddenborn, the first one is Beverly Leonard. She's the one that was identified last night by them. And they say that this is a witness who reached out to them in the late last night, which is which is whatever. That's fine. But she is, as best we can tell, she's one of the police officers from the Seattle airport, which you object to have them calling for a couple of different reasons. The first one, Your Honor, is Your Honor's ruling the case, both in limine and during Ms. Hur's examination. No arrest is coming in relating to Tasha Van Ray issue. Your Honor has already wrote on that. Calling a police officer, even if they say, well... We're not going to elicit the testimony she was arrested. That would be like calling the UK judge and saying, we're going to put you in the stand. Don't talk about the ruling. Just talk about the discovery and the witness testimony and all that. The court, all right. We think the jury is going to draw from that. Second, Your Honor, that the type of evidence and the type of this testimony is precluded by the collateral evidence rule, which basically says that when somebody's introduced on the cross-examination, a party cannot introduce extrinsic evidence on a collateral matter. What happened in Seattle Airport between Ms. Hurd and Ms. Van Ray is a classic example of collateral matter that's barred by the collateral evidence doctrine. It's also barred under 260-608B, Your Honor. I have a copy, if Your Honor would like to see, but under 608B, specific instances of the conduct may not be provided by extrinsic value evidence and this is a side issue related to the trial it's about something totally unrelated to this and so collateral evidence 608b and the fact that you would viol expressly violate or explicitly violate your honest ruling that the rest is too prejudicial and isn't coming in okay Ms. Vasquez, if I, if I may be heard, Your Honor, I was the one who received an email past 1 a.m. last night, still working with Ms. Myers. I can represent to you that I emailed Ms. Leonard back and asked her to call me my cell phone. I then had a phone call with Ms. Leonard. I confirmed a couple things. She has not been watching the trial. She has not seen the testimony. I have instructed her, per Your Honor's ruling, that she is not to watch the trial, watch testimony. That's not the issue. I understand that. Now, as an attempt with Your Honor's blessing to offer Ms. Leonard just to testify as a third-party fact witness as to what she observed. It is rebuttal. It is impeachment. Ms. Hurd asked, Your Honor's aware, allowed me to ask Ms. Hurd whether she assaulted her ex-girlfriend. She denied doing so. I then asked Ms. Hurd whether people saw it. She denied that people saw it. Oof. Oof. Oh, man. <laughs> Amber did not know that these people were going to come up on the stand. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Does it really surprise me? No, not really. Because remember, she also lied about having all these injuries when she was like taking high res photo quality red carpet pictures days and or immediately the day following after these injuries would have occurred. So, damn. The court. So you're saying this witness actually saw this? Ms. Vasquez. Yes, she witnessed the assault. She's the arresting officer. Ms. Brodohoff. No, she's not. Ms. Vasquez, I can represent to the court as an officer of this court that she would not testify that she arrested Ms. Hurd. She's only going to testify. She can't testify. She's an officer either. Ms. Vasquez, she's not an officer anymore. She's now retired. If you like her not even testify, she cannot say anything about being an officer, just somebody at the airport. And that's the part that I was confused. I was like, wait, why, why did they never mention that she was a police officer? And now we're getting our answer. Ms. Vasquez, 
Somebody at the airport, she observed Miss Heard hit Miss Van Ray, rip off her necklace, leaving marks on her neck. That's what she's going to testify to. Man, if only we can get like security cam footage of the, uh, of the whole thing. The court. All right. Mr. Roddenborn, it's a plainly collateral matter. It's a mistrial. It's a collateral matter just as we were to bring someone on to testify about something Johnny did. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about this argument. <laughs> oh, I think Ben forgot about one other witness. So Mr. Roddenborn says it's plainly collateral matter. It's a mistrial. It's a collateral matter just as we were to bring someone on to testify about something Johnny did. 30 years ago, it's collateral matter. It's not relating. The court says, well, you did. Vasquez says, Ellen Barkin. Mr. Rodenborn, understood. <laughs> Mr. Rodenborn, did you forget about Ellen Barkin? Oh, no, 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 no. The court, how is that not allowed? Mr. Rodenborn, under 608B, your honor, a specific instance of conduct may not be proved by extrinsic evidence. The court, what was Miss Barkin? Mr. Rodenborn, Miss Barkin was testifying about the facts of her time and experience. The court with a with specific incident, Mr. Ronenborn, which didn't come in cross examination, Your Honor, blessed before the trial. It's a totally separate issue. They could have argued that. They didn't object to that, Your Honor. I mean, 608B is very clear. The specific instance of the conduct may not be proved by extrinsic evidence. They were allowed to elicit testimony by Ms. Hurd on that. The court, she denied it. Ms. Vasquez, she denied it. The court, she denied it that it happened. So for impeachment purposes, they can have someone say it happened. Mr. Ronenborn, not under 608B. Can I get a copy of the rule? The court, sure. Ms. Vasquez, thank you. Mr. Roddenborn, specific instances, specific instances of the conduct of a witness may not be proved by extrinsic evidence except as, and they say except as otherwise provided in this rule. It's not impeachment. If it's impeachment, it's not impeachment. Sorry, if it's impeachment, it's impeachment on plainly collateral matter. It's not related to whether or not Mr. Depp abused Ms. Heard. This is a collateral matter under both the common law collateral evidence doctrine and the rules of evidence, which is not allowed. And her testimony is not, it wasn't false. She said she didn't assault. Ms. Vasquez, it's proper rebuttal, Your Honor, and it's impeachment. Ms. Hurd said that she did not assault Ms. Van Ray, that Ms. that people did not see it. That's exactly what Ms. Leonard tends to testify about. The court, I don't find that it's a collateral matter in this, I don't find that it's a collateral matter in this matter because Ms. Hurd testified that she always does self-defense. She only hits in self-defense. Oof, 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 oh my God. And that's where our expert also testified that always hits in self-defense. That's why I allowed the question to begin with to Ms. Heard at the one time when she was on the stand in cross-examination. She said it did not happen. I will allow the testimony. Very limited though. Understood, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. As an officer of the court, I will represent she will not testify that she was formerly a police officer or that she was arrested or she arrested Ms. Heard. The court, very limited testimony. Ms. Vasquez, understood will be allowed in this matter based on that for impeachment purposes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next one, Mr. Ronenborn wants to talk about Kate Moss. Second matter, Your Honor, is just to get some parameters of what Kate Moss is allowed to testify to. Okay. I don't have to, so I don't have to jump up. Is h &L her? Yeah. The court, there's a lobby. I don't know who it was. Mr. Ronenborn. This is the testimony of Amber related to Kate Moss. It's this one sentence. She said, I just, in my head, Instantly think of Kate Moss in the stairs when I swing at him. Mm. The court, right? Mr. Rodenborn. So in our interview, asking about Kate Moss, did Johnny ever hurt you in the stairs? That's fair game. The court, anything on the stairs? Ms. Vasquez, it's only related in the stairs, but Your Honor, I will represent that in cross-examination. I also inquired of Ms. Hurd whether or not Ms. Whether or not, what about Ms. Moss she remembered? And she testified in cross-examination that she just heard a rumor. Mr. Chu, may I just, Mr. Rodenborn, I don't remember that part. I don't have that. I don't recall that. I'm not, I'm not doubting that's what she's saying, but she heard a rumor. It's a rumor about what happened on the stairs. So what I'm going to say is they shouldn't be allowed to say illicit testimony about, oh, Johnny was so sweet. Johnny never hit me. They want to get back and ask her, you know, a couple questions that about, did he hit you on the stairs? I think it's fair game. But beyond anything beyond that is beyond the scope of the rebuttal. And I think that's why they're trying to do. I think they're just trying to stem this off now. Mr. Chu, it's just a very short examination. And here's a testimony question question Ms. Vasquez cross-examination Mr. Chu from Ms. Vasquez you thought he was going to throw your sister down the stairs like he had thrown Kate Moss down the stairs right he swung at Whitney and I heard a rumor about that so that's what I thought of the court right Mr. Chu she testified at both on direct the court okay yes about the stairs Mr. Chu it's a very I wish Mr. Chu was in more of these uh sidebars um he was basically like the the uh the lead counselor 
So, you know, everyone else mostly did most of the work and like he made sure to oversee everyone. But I wish it was in more of the side parts because he is a snarky guy and he is very funny. <laughs> Hi, Gwendolyn. How are you doing today? Hello. Hello. It's a very limited inquiry um, about whether he will physically he ever physically harmed her. What we've been doing throughout the Miss Vasquez, they brought in. Clearly, what she's saying is that Johnny was violent. Clearly, what she's saying is that Johnny was violent with her. And she's going to say that's not true. Mr. Ronneborn, that's beyond the scope, Your Honor. The only two times Kate Moss came up in this rumor about what happened on the stairs to get them to listen testimony about if he was ever violent, which I know is that they're going to try to do. That's beyond the scope. Mr. Chu, they listed testimony from Ellen Barkin about Johnny throwing a bottle 30 years ago against the wall in a crowded room and being abusive. Mr. Ronneborn, your Honor has held both parties to objections that are made at the time. And if objections are made at the time, then we waive them. They could have brought up these issues. The court, they object to Ellen Barkin's deposition testimony. Ms. Vasquez, even in motion and eliminate, Your Honor, Mr. Ronenborn, understood. By my understanding, it's not the same basis that we're objecting now. I'm saying this is beyond the scope of this. It's rebuttal testimony. Your Honor has been very strictly, the court, but they're saying they're rebutting Ellen Barkin also. Mr. Bre Ms. Bredehoff, they never raised it in interrogatories. Like, they can't call Kate Moss to rebut El blah, blah, blah. Mr. Ronenborn. They can't call Kate Moss to rebut Ellen Barkin, Your Honor. It's an inappropriate rebuttal testimony. This is the one and only instance where Kate Moss came up, which was a rumor that Johnny had injured her on the stairs, which is limited to Amber. That was a widely circulated rumor. That should be only. I'm just going to limit it to the stairs, okay? Mr. Chu, Your Honor, I understand the court. The only because the only reason it's coming in is because she opened the door on cross examination. Ooh, about the stairs. <laughs> Mr. Chu, but we won't, but won't the jury think they're not allowed to ask whether he hit her? They're going to think the court. Well, I mean, he could have done it case in chief. I don't know if it would have come in in case chief, in, ca in case in chief. But what I'm saying is the only reason it was overruled is because the door was open because she mentioned Kate Moss on the stairs. She did that. And that's why she's coming in to testify that nothing happened on the stairs. Mr. Chu, May I set the context of how she knows the court? Well, how she knows is fine. Mr. Ronneborn, how she knows him? If it's like you did it for five years, that's fine. The court, I just don't want to run afoul of the court's rule. The court, yeah, you can do that. I'm saying you can't ask questions about was he ever violent? Mr. Chu, I understand. The court, focus right on the stairs. Mr. Chu, I got gotcha. you. Understood, Your Honor. I just want to be clear. I don't want to run afoul. <laughs> court says, I appreciate it. Two more, Mr. Ronneborn says. I'll be quick. This is Dr. Collins, who they indicated will be calling today. Dr. Collins is a pathologist who will testify. I think will testify about some bruising pictures on Amber's face. They designate a lot report, a longer report of her initial. This is kind of like the Berkovici situation last week. They designate a longer report of what her initial designations. They didn't put the case in chief. Her rebuttal designations, which were filed at the end of the February, consists of that. So we believe that she should not be allowed to testify. They could have put her in there in the case in chief. They elected not to. All right. So this is the rebuttal designation. Yep. Mrs. Myers, if I may, Your Honor, we designate her as an informative witness, right? But we designate her at the earliest time at which she had to identify our expert witnesses, which was in January 2022. The court, obviously, they can't rebut anything on Dr. Jordan because Dr. Jordan didn't testify. That's true, and we don't intend to have her do that. The court, so previously exposed as to which plaintiff incorporates by reference. Um, what was the first? Mr. Ronneborn. The first designation was quite wholesome, but our point is that's our, their case in chief. They should have put her on the during the case in chief. They just call her during rebuttal. Here's the problem. It's not rebuttal. It's a defense of your counterclaim. Right. So that's an issue that you're going to have with some of these witnesses. I have a response to that. So there was an initial expert disclosure. I think it was January 11th or January 10th. Something like that. The disclosure for people in the response for the claims. The defense was due February 10th. Okay. Then there was a final rebuttal disclosure. They didn't disclose anything about Collins for February 10th. I just want to ask you guys, do you guys notice how we're seeing how little we are seeing of Elaine after she bombed the Amber Heard direct examination and then when Camille Vasquez was doing the cross examination and then how she bombed when she did the rebuttal? Um, I don't know if Elaine asked them to like, hey, you know what? I need to take a step back. I'm fucking shut up. Or if they're like, yo, Elaine, take a step back, fool. <laughs> you you messing too much up right now because um, we don't really see too much of Elaine. Um and there's something that I wanted to mention as well. We'll get to it when Amber Heard, Amber Heard does a rebuttal. But um, yeah, we're seeing a lot of run and born here. And I think this may, they, may have told, they may have told Elaine to just kind of step aside um, since she screwed up horribly during the rebuttal stuff. Okay. 
Mr. Rodderborn, then there was a final rebuttal disclosure. They didn't disclose anything about Collins on February 10th. The court, they did disclose some people on February 10th for the defense. Mr. Rodderborn, but not Collins. The court, all right. So, so Collins was not listed. So either in the direct case or rebuttal, but not in the counterclaim. Correct. Am I the only reason that she wasn't listed for rebuttal? And the, and the only reason she wasn't listed for rebuttal is Dr. Jordan. We didn't call Dr. Jordan, so she shouldn't be allowed to testify in rebuttal. Ms. Myers, Your Honor, we designated her in informative designations. They had a notice as of January 2022. She's the earliest. She's had more notice than it was necessary to put up in rebuttal. And which was designations, which, right? If necessary, I can grab identified. We identified at the end. We said that we also designate her to testify in rebuttal in response to anything that any witness has testified to. And at this point, well, you can't use an expert rebuttal on late witness but we an expert in rebuttal can only rebut experts so we identified her in the initial disclosure and what was she rebutting which expert she rebutting we designated her affirmatively at this point they didn't put any of the photographs miss her during our case in chief so now that's in it's in their defense it's your rebuttal rebuttal case well it's in our defense case you didn't designate her as a defense expert defense witness correct your defense expert i believe we did in reference the court designate as your defense expert that's a different story you're saying they didn't designate mr ronaborn i do not believe she was ever mentioned on february tw- uh, 10th these are the two february 10th all right so let me see the designations from february 10th do we have the designations from february 20th 10th sorry <laughs> february 10th i can't say that word mr ronaborn mr murphy has those the court does somebody have the designations from february 10th miss vasquez your honor miss myers so, Your Honor, first of all, there's no prejudice here. We identified her affirmatively. And this is a long one. The court, rebuttal witnesses are only for experts who were disposed in this case. Who is rebutting their expert? Ms. Myers. Well, she's responding to the evidence that came in in their defense. No, objections sustained unless you designate them in your defense. Mr. Rodenborn. And I believe the same argument is going to be made for Mr. Neumeister. Was he designating your defense? He's in the affirmative and they didn't bring any experts, so he can testify either. So that's where we're at. We'll just confirm. There was no reference there. We're checking there too. Okay. That's where we are. Okay. Well, that's all we have. Ms. Vasquez, I anticipate, Your Honor, that the rebuttal experts that are counters to Dr. Neumeister and Dr. Collins will also not be allowed to testify in the rebuttal case. The court, well, yes, because if Dr. Collins doesn't testify, because if Dr. Collins doesn't, doesn't testify, then they don't get a rebuttal expert either. It works both ways. We wouldn't be able to call Jordan if Neumeister's out. Correct. The court, they can only rebut experts they put in defense. All right. Mr. Nadehoff. Mr. Murphy's looking for February. At the February, February 10th. I don't see Collins. This is a part of my argument, Your Honor. Neumeister is not in there as well. The court. We have Richard Marks in defense, Mr. Spindler in defense, Mr. Bania, Dr. Curry in defense, uh, Dr. Shaw in defense. That's where we are. All right. So that's where we are. Oh, and the TMZ motion is set for one o'clock. So they'll be here at one o'clock to argue their motion. Would you like to wait on the motion? Mr. Chu. Yes, Your Honor. We're prepared. The court. It'll be quick, though. Ms. Myers, if I may, I have some exhibits for Jamie that she requested. The court, sure. Uh, Deputy attorney, Your Honor, we have a prepared written opposition in the motion to exclude Mr. Neumeister. The court, would you like to put this in part of your record? Deputy attorney, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, that was a long one. Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we have Dr. Curry. She's back on the stand, and this is a direct by... Mr. Dennison. So we have Elaine here for a little bit. All right. She's testifying outside the scope for designation now, Your Honor. Doctor, and I elicited this from her, and you may recall this before. The only thing she's identified to is whether she, Ms. Hurd, has PTSD or not. She's not, she's not explicitly testifying. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on, let me close the door. All right. Back to Elaine. All right, she's testifying outside the scope for designation, Your Honor. Doctor, and I elicited this from her, and you may recall this before. The only thing she's testifying to is whether Dr. Miss Hurd has PTSD or not, and she's not. She's explicitly testifying that she's explicitly not testifying about whether she suffered IPV or not, whether she was a perpetrator, whether she was a victim, whether she suffered any domestic abuse. All those things she's already testified and admitted, those are not part of her opinion. And now she's clearly trying to tell the jury about IPV and assessing whether somebody has suffered from IPV. And that's completely outside of the scope of the designation. Jesus, Elaine, that was fucking wordy as hell. Mr. Dennison, Your Honor, I respectfully disagree with that analysis. This is the root of the problem. There are multiple pages in this report, pages 18 through through 23. Uh-huh. That reflected each of the tests that they've been asking about and why they why Dr. Curry believes they were in administ- the, why Dr. Curry believes they were administered correctly, incorrectly. I don't object. I didn't object to those, but now she's testifying on whether someone suffered from IPV or not. And that's absolutely outside of the scope. 
first of all, I don't think she, I'm not sure that's where she was going. Miss Brenda Hop. She's just trying to say explicitly, she's trying to say that she's trying to figure out whether somebody's suffering from IPV or not. Not that she's going to give an opinion to that. I think she's just disgusting. Well, she's definitely not giving an opinion on that. That's some outside the scope. She cannot address whether somebody suffers from IPV or not. She's already admitted that outside. Well, I don't think she's giving an opinion about whether somebody, I think she's talking about IPV. She can't talk about IPV. She's confined to PTSD. She cannot. And she said that she did not try to evaluate for IPV. I even elicited from her testimony earlier, nothing about IPV or domestic abuse. Your Honor, she specifically identified that nothing about IPV other than the tests given by Dr. Hughes were done inappropriately. And I did not object to what she was testifying to those, Your Honor. But now she went into, she's talking about whether you have a crystal ball, whether you can determine whether somebody has suffered from IPV or not. And that's outside the scope. It's not anywhere, anywhere a part of her testimony. I believe the answer was in relation to the use of the checklist. Overrule the objection. Make sure it's within the test, okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. Another objection by Elaine. I think Dr. Curry is still on the stand. Elaine says, very explicitly, she's not testifying about, and I elicited in the trial testimony early. She's not testifying about whether Ms. Hurst suffered any PTSD as a result of defamatory statements. Explicitly testified she is not. She's not, it's not anywhere in the report. It's not in her rebuttal report. She's admitted that on the stand. She's not the one addressing, was not on task to address that. Her answer, and it's this last answer of this inquiry, is there any, is there no PTSD to be triggered? Still, he's asking, she's trying to connect to defamation. You know, she can say there's no PTSD, but she cannot connect to defamation. She did not disclose that opinion. She's going to bring it up in a defamation. Is that the issue? All it literally says, it brings in the current time frame. There's no effort to connect it to other than they're saying there's no PTSD to be triggered. I think you can state there is no PTSD to be triggered. I get that. I disagree, Your Honor. He's bringing the defamation, letting her give an opinion about whether she has PTSD as a result of defamation. And she explicitly said she's not speaking to that. Okay, you cannot ask about the defamation, but he can ask no PTSD has been triggered. I can do that and not talk uh, about it. All right. Long discussion about more rebuttal witnesses. All right, who are we discussing now? We're discussing, is this a picture with Amber Heard? Okay, so these are the pictures. I think Amber Heard's uh, injuries. All right, let's talk about this one. This one's going to be a long one. Dr. Collins was Johnny's forensic pathologist. So her testimony was going to be on bruising, laceration, scars, and contusions. Dr. Collins? Forensic pathologist. Oh. And they never testified. Okay. <laughs> Harry Potter books? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> She was going to testify about the bruising and Amber's injuries and how they could not be real medically. Oh. All right, all right. Long discussion. Ms. Myers, Your Honor, I think earlier when we were discussing the expert issue, oh, we're going backwards. I understand that, but that's why I wanted to grab this. Sure. This is our rebuttal designations, right? We incorporate by reference the affirmation designation of both Mr. Neumeister and Dr. Collins, right? And so we're offering to rebut, not as a fact witness, but evidence that was represented in the defensive case. We understand that re rebuttal evidence is evidence that a plaintiff offers to explain or repel evidence that the defendant offered. It's only to rebut an expert. Your Honor, I think the rule, I didn't work that way when I didn't let the experts testify. I didn't work that way when I didn't let their experts testify. Well, Your Honor, I think that was a different issue because the expert was only designated in rebuttal to rebut the testimony for expert doctor or Ms. Frost. In this case, we designate them affirmatively in fairness, the court, in your case in chief, in our case in chief. And those, those are affirmative. That's not in your defense. But this is also in our rebuttal case, Your Honor. We identified them as rebuttal witness at, that incorporated their expert testimony from the affirmative designations. Right. So you could have called them your case in chief. But we also designate them as rebuttal witness that would testify to, testify to what? To rebut the wit evidence that was provided during their, an expert can only rebut an expert. So your honor, my understanding is that an expert can be called. It is reversible error if I let an expert testify unless they're designated. So we designate reversal error is what I'm trying to avoid in this case. I understand your honor. So is my understanding that the rule is not that an expert cannot be called in rebuttal unless they're rebutting another expert, but they can be called an expert, you know, under that rule, an expert can never be called in rebuttal if there's no expert testimony on in the defense case. Okay. And so what we are basically during their defense case. So the issue of fairness in our affirmative case, the, I would like to make a record if I may. Yes, sure. 
Right. So the testimony of our expert, Mr. Neumeister and Dr. Collins, only became relevant once the photograph evidence of Ms. Hur's purported injuries came into evidence. That did, we cannot control that we obviously are not offering that, that they did not offer when they were crossing Mr. Depp or anyone else in the case in chief. They tried to offer it when they did a depositions of the police officers, which was objected to. Which was objected to, and then it came in during the defensive case. So the testimony of Mr. Neumeister and Dr. Collins only became relevant once that evidence came in during the defensive case. And so we are now offering, which we, you know, trials are fluid. We can't anticipate when or if a certain evidence will come in. Photographs only come in during the defensive case, as well as Ms. Hurt's testimony about how those injuries occurred. And so now the after their defensive case, the testimony of Mr. Neumeister and Dr. Collins has now become relevant based off the evidence that they put in. And we submit that those experts, because we designated them at the first available date, <coughs> we have designated what they intend to testify about at that time. And then we incorporate by reference that testimony that would respond to any photographic evidence, any purported injuries. We did find that when we submitted the experts for a rebuttal case, as well as identifying them to rebut the certain experts if they put them out. But we identified them as rebuttal witnesses who could testify about photographic evidence and other injuries that came in during the defensive case. So we submit that's proper and fair to permit them to testify. Mr. Ronenborn, I don't have anything to add to the arguments of this morning, Your Honor, unless you have any questions. The court. So they're saying they're incorporated as their expert designated from their case in chief. The evidence came up with a photograph in your case, and therefore they can bring an expert to talk in about the photograph, which I believe is their argument. Mr. Ronenborn, they could have put the expert in on their case in chief. They obviously objected, as Your Honor pointed out, to our point to our attempt to get the picture in. And for all the reasons we discussed this morning and our Your Honor rule, they're going backwards. The court. Mr. Murphy, do you want to talk? This is your motion, so. So Mr. Murphy is one of Amber Heard's attorneys. Yes, absolutely, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Newmeister, Your Honor. The exact argument on Mr. Berkovici. I have the transcript, and that was the expert that was here to rebut the facts. And Your Honor said, no, experts essentially rebut experts. Now they're trying to say that that's what they argued against. Their expert is here to rebut the facts. This is a complete contradiction, Berkovici. From my understanding of it, looking at the transcript. Well, Berkovici was just a rebuttal expert. What they're trying to say is differences. So I want to get through this. And this is actually what they had him designated also in their case in chief. They did. Um, they didn't call him. They also would have called Ms. Hurd in the case in chief and put the photographs. They chose not to. That's, again, their choice. That's not no reason they can put an, an expert to rebut the factual testimony when he wasn't identified in the disclosure. And the rebuttal disclosure says he's here over and over to rebut Ms. Ackard and has not, who has not testified. Well, no, it also says incorporates the case in chief. Mr. Murphy. Well, in the line above that, Your Honor, if you can just insert incorporates everything previously in the case, but every expert disclosure, it would just defeat the purpose of what the specific testimony is and the specific disclosures and specific parts of the case. I mean, Mr. Roddenborn said Your Honor ruled on this morning and we're trying to go backwards. Well, I just want to make sure we get it right. Ms. Bredehoff, the incorporation, if you recall, Your Honor didn't let have didn't let me have Dr. Hughes testify on things that we incorporate by reference to the designation for our testimony. Ms. Myers, so Your Honor, a couple things. We can't be punished for not calling defendant in our case in chief. The reason we objected to the pictures were foundational because there had not been a foundation laid for those photographs. And you know, we saw some of these photographs actually did end up coming in for various reasons. So these experts truly become relevant. Look, we couldn't have it anticipated that. We identified them in case these paragraphs did come in and that testimony did come in in our case in chief. It did not. And then in defendants, they offered it. I think, you know, an expert can be called to rebut factual evidence. Does anyone have a case law for me? Any case law? Ms. Myers, we looked very hard. There's not a clear case law on this either way. The court, there's a reason for that. Mr. Roddenborn, they clearly knew they could have designated and called the experts in their case in chief because they put them in the January designations designated them in their defense, but they did it, but they didn't. This is all rebuttal case. We're offering these not as defense witness, but we're rebutting. So you're offering them as rebuttal. Then they didn't testify. Well, we're offering them to rebut evidence that came in during the case in their defensive case. All the case law I've ever read says that you can't use an expert to rebut lay witness testimony, but it's not just lay witness testimony. We're rebutting fact, documentary, photographic evidence that came in through lay witnesses, right? Yeah, but I think that, again, I think the role cannot be an expert, can't be unless called they're rebutting another expert. I think it has, I'll tell you what, I'll give you until lunchtime to find me a case that says in rebuttal, an expert can testify. Even though an expert did not testify in direct, all right, I'll give him a chance. Give me a law, a case law. At some point, we just need to move on. This is Mr. Roddenborn. The court, I'm just giving them an hour and then we'll just move on, okay? So we'll give you until lunchtime, which I guess will be around. I'm not really sure. Who's up next? Ms. Myers, if we cannot call Dr. Collins, I think we'll call Mr. Depp at this time. 
we'll do that. So we're just near the end. We're probably not going to have any testimony tomorrow. Is that what we're thinking? Even if you get these witnesses in, Ms. Vasquez. So there's another issue, Your Honor. Our expert, Dr. Gilbert, who is rebutting and was designated just to rebut Dr. Moore, the hand surgeon, he can only testify in person tomorrow. The court, okay. He's scheduled to fly this evening, the court. Well, I don't think the jury has any problems with me releasing them early. We can work on jury instructions if that's the case. Were you planning on any rebuttal on witnesses? Elaine, yes, Your Honor. We're planning on calling Dr. Hughes and Amber Heard. That's it. And both are relatively short. Honestly, I think they should not have called Amber Heard on the rebuttal because she got completely destroyed by Camille Vasquez. And I understand they got uh, Rodden Bourne to do the direct examination in the rebuttal, but still, like Amber Heard on the stand was just like, she just, she, she killed their case. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And it seems like she didn't really do any, she, if anything, she did worse on rebuttal. She was way more defensive. She was made, way more irate and she didn't come across very well in the rebuttal. Um, court says, is there any, well, okay, I guess it depends on this and the issue. Ms. Myers, and your honor, if I may, Ms. Vasquez just reminded me of this. I do believe, especially with respect to Dr. Collins, her testimony is rebutting the evidence that came in from Dr. Moore, who designated about Mr. Depp's finger injury, that it was designated her an affirmative disclosure. Okay. No, that's, I'll wait. Ms. Myers, and I believe that she also designed, she can also be designated to come. I think she's also rebutting the testimony from Dr. Hughes that Ms. Hur's injuries resulting from IPV were more severe than Mr. Depp. And she testified to the severity of the injuries. So I think that was, those some information that were disclosed in our affirmative designations identifying the rebuttal, which under your honor's ruling can be offered to rebut expert testimony. Mr. Rodenborn, a couple of things, your honor. She designated to rebut the opinions of Dr. Jordan. Ms. Myers, but she's also designated, her original designations are also incorporated by reference. Mr. Rodenborn, if I may finish, your honor. Ms. Myers, on rebuttal, Mr. Rodenborn. Dr. Moore was not designated until February. Ms. Myers just told you that she is designated to rebut the opinions of Dr. Moore. That's not true. Ms. Myers, I did not. Mr. Rodenborn, you did just say that. She was designated to rebut the opinion of Dr. Jordan, and I have her testimony where I ask her, are you rebutting the testimony of Dr. Moore? And she says, no. I want to. I can just get it from the outline. Ms. Vasquez, if I may, Your Honor, just briefly be heard. I'll wait. Court, yes, wait. Ms. Vasquez, if I may briefly be heard on that point, uh-huh. She, in the affirmative designation, Dr. Collins opined as to the cause of the finger or injury. Okay, Mr. Rodenborn, here's page 87. The court, I have to go by the designations. You understand that. Ms. Vasquez, we do. The court, again, we're not getting reversible error in this case. Ms. Vasquez, we understand, Your Honor. The court, I'll read the designations of the rule. Mr. Rodenborn, just because they told you that she was rebutting Dr. Moore's testimony, please just read that. The court, you're not offering any expert opinion in reaction to or in rebuttal to Dr. Moore's opinion, correct? Correct. Ms. Myers, okay, so Your Honor, I think that's the deposition. Ms. Myers, I understand that. Your Honor, I think the point is that we've identified her about the testimony about her affirmative designations as a potential rebuttal evidence, and we could not have known whether Dr. Moore was coming in. Her testimony, she's not rebutting Dr. Moore uh, specifically. She won't opine on, to, on, the, on his things, but her testimony about the finger injury six is exploratory, you know, rebuts what Dr. Moore is testifying to. The court, that needs to be designated. I have to go by the designations, okay? Ms. Uh, Ms. Myers, I understand. So that we're clear. Now, if you want to find me something in the next hour on Mr. Neumeister, we'll take that up. Ms. Myers, well, I think the issue is that, excuse me, the case law that you asked us to look for is whether an expert can be offered to rebut factual evidence that didn't necessarily come in through an expert witness, right? We will look for them because that would apply to both of them. Mr. Ronenborn, I would disagree. That's the only issue. We can see what they come up with. We still think there's an initial rebuttal things. As Your Honor will remember with Mr. Bokovici, he said, I'll testify in rebuttal to Mr. Frost. And there was a comma and he said, Oxford comma, Mr. Roddenbord, I'm not going backwards on that. I'm just saying that that was something that was designated. The court, well, I think he was just designated as a rebuttal expert. I think this is apples and oranges, but I just, I have never seen, I don't want to create reversible error. I have just never seen an expert rebut lay testimony. Mr. Roddenbord, particularly when they have an opportunity when they designated the court, and I even took the metadata out of it. So there's not any metadata in the evidence. Ms. Myers, I understand that. I think particularly with respect to Dr. Collins, it's just, it's not so much that she's responding to, not responding to lay testimony. She's providing an expert opinion to explain the factual evidence that came in during the defense's case. The court, that's a no for sure. So if you want, Mr. Chu, Your Honor, may we have until one since we have the argument at 12? The court, okay. Ms. Bredehoff, Your Honor, we have our experts. I mean, we're releasing them all. I mean, the court, excuse me. You're releasing, oh, you have Dr. Ackert here. I can only give you until noon. Mr. Chu, What's that, Your Honor? The court, yeah, I can only give you until noon to see what you can find out, okay? I don't think there's going to be much there. Mr. Roddenborn, thank you, Your Honor. The court, I'm not creating reversible error. You have to understand this. Ms. Vasquez, we do understand that. The only point I'll make is that I don't understand that how a party can designate a rebuttal witness. The court, rebuttal expert. 
Ms. Vasquez, a rebuttal expert witness only to testify if the defense puts on an expert. The court, that's what rebuttal experts are in Virginia. Ms. Vasquez, I understand, but we'll find the case law, I hope. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So they're arguing about, so obviously we find out that um, Newmeister, I think he does come back, doesn't he? Yeah, Newmeister comes back, but the other doctor, Dr. Collins or Dr. Dr. Collins doesn't come in. But Newmeister, I think, was the one that testified about the um, the pictures, right? How Amber Heard had two pictures, but both of them were very different looking because one looked like it had like some bruising, while the other one just looked like it had like reddening on her face. It looked like she took the picture and then probably like photo edited or someone photo edited and made it a lot more saturated to make it look like there was actual bruising on her face. But the original one did not look like that. All right. So at this point we have, sorry, these are very long sidebars, but I think some of these are going to get shorter. Um, at this point, we have JD back on the stand. Oops. And they're going to talk about poop on the bed. <laughs> I wonder whose poop on the bed. Is it the dog's poop or is it Amber Heard's poop? All right. Poop on the bed. Sidebar number 11. Oh, my God. The poop thing is so gross. All right. So Roddenborn. I don't know where he's going with his testimony on the problem, but if he's going to talk about the dog issues and the visas in Australia, your honor has already made a couple rulings. I believe in this case, that's not, that's a collateral issue. That's something that's not going in the court at the motion in limine. I said, I wouldn't allow it in testimony, but then Ms. Bretterhoff in her opening statement kind of threw everything out. <laughs> Ms. Bretterhoff, <laughs> Mr. Rodderboard about an Australia dog. I don't the court about the dog poop in Australia, the court. No, that's a different dog. The court, oh, that's different. Mr. Roddenborn, she addressed the dog poop on the bed. Believe me, I wish I had it. <laughs> Did she? I don't remember Elaine's opening statement. Did Elaine bring up the dog poop on the bed? And Roddenborn's like, oh, God, fucking Elaine. Why? Why? Yeah, apparently Yorkies take a shit the size of a like human shit. I don't know how Yorkies can shit that much. <laughs> they apparently have gaping buttholes or something. <laughs> The court. Yes. Okay. So you're just going to talk about the dogs getting into Australia. Mr. Roddenborn, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp had brought the dogs to Australia. The court. Right. I understand that. Mr. Roddenborn, but that your honor had, has been kept out. Ms. Myers. So your honor, I can assure you that he understands that he cannot. Mr. Roddenborn. He just said, Ms. Myers. Yes. He understands he can't reference like legal issues. He's just going to say there's an issue. Generally, Mr. Roddenborn. He just testified that there's a problem with her getting in Australia. That goes over the line. Miss Myers, I don't believe that's true, Your Honor. I understood Your Honor's ruling. We try to get the fact of her pleading guilty to the false form issue, and we understand that's the court. He's going to say there was problems. What else is going to say? Miss Myers, he's just explaining that because there was a problem, he was asked to intercede with Warner Brothers. He was asked to intercede with Warner Brothers. I assure you that he's not going to touch the specifics at all. Intercede with Warner Brothers. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what that means either. Even just saying that there was a problem, I think it runs afoul. The court, I think that saying there was a problem is fine. We're not going to get into the problems was or anything about Ms. Heard. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that's fine. And then there's, okay, if he was asked to intercede with Warner Brothers, who's he going to testify he was asked by other than Ms. Heard? Amber, he's just saying that Ms. Hurd, my understanding is he got this information from Ms. Hurd, which wouldn't be hearsay is a statement of party opponent. Well, we can just take it as it comes. Take it one at a time. Okay, appreciate it. This point, sidebar, uh, JD throws a jab at Broad and Bourne and they talk about the Kate Moss Thayer's incident. Oh, I might have chuckled at this sidebar, actually. <laughs> 7204, okay. 72048. Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Hurd testifying that she punched you in the staircase incident because she thought of Kate Moss and the stairs? Yes, I do remember her saying that. Yes. Yes, I do. Three times. Yes, I do. Do you have any understanding as to what Ms. Hurd was referring to? Yes, I do. And as Kate Moss stated, as Kate Moss, Kate testified. It was many, many years ago. Exactly what happened, what she said happened. I recall speaking to Ms. Hurd about that very incident because of the downpouring of the rain, because it was raining very heavily that day that Kate slipped. And I recalled the story to her. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. May we approach, Your Honor? Okay. Ms. Myers, 
Your Honor, this goes to Ms. Hurd's knowledge. It's not being offered for the truth, but the fact that he told it to her. She testified that she, I mean, she implied very strongly that Mr. Depp had thrown Miss Moss down the stairs. And if she knew that it was not true, she's certainly relevant to assessing her credibility. Mr. Roddenborn, she didn't imply that at all. She just saw the testimony this morning. You said she heard rumors that it happened and that went through her head. The court overruled the objection. Mr. Roddenborn, okay. Please continue, Mr. Depp. What did you tell Miss Hurd about the staircase or Kate Mosk? Answer. I'll make it easier for Mr. Roddenborn. Miss Hurd took the story and turned it into a very ugly incident, all in her mind. There was never a moment where I pushed Kate Moss down any set of stairs, yet she skewed this three times before. Mr. Roddenborn. Objection, Your Honor. Miss Hurd simply testified she heard a rumor, and that's not responsive to the question. The question. What's the, the witness? What's the rumor? The court, sir, hold on. There's an objection. Witness, sorry. The court, I'll overrule the objection. Mr. Roddenborn, misstates the facts and evidence. The court, I'll overrule the objection. Answer, sorry. I was drawn by Mr. Roddenborn's voice. What would you like? Question, so what specifically had you actually told Miss Hurd about the incident with Miss Moss and the stairs? Answer, very simply that she had, we were in Jamaica. I had left our bungalow about three minutes prior to her. I was standing outside and suddenly rain starts coming down like it's, you know, a monsoon. And then I remember looking and seeing Kate coming out of the store. And then there was three little wooden stairs. She slipped and her legs went up indicating and that she landed directly on her coccyx on her lower back. She was obviously physically in pain. She was hurt. She was crying. So I ran over and grabbed to make sure she was all right. That's it. That's the... That's all I ever, that's the whole story. But then the rumor of it, I've never heard a rumor of like that before, before Ms. Hurd grabbed a hold of it like that. I'm sorry. Now we're talking about JD's donation. Sidebar number 14. Okay, so lots of sidebars with JD being on the stand and... <laughs> uh, Mr. Roddenborn says, this was covered in motions in limine. Your Honor, they put in a testimony in their case in chief for Mr. Mandel, where he said Mr. Depp does not spend very much money on charity. I believe that opens the door for him to rebut that. Mr. Roddenborn, I have no objection to that. I don't remember that testimony, but I'm not doubting her. But if that came in, I have no objection to the limited thing. But if he's going to talk about some, you know. Is this the only question on this? Asked Judge Penny. Mr. Roddenborn, if that's the only question, I have no objection to it. But if they try to go beyond that, I think it runs afoul of the motion. Do you think Amber or Elaine should have coached Asia not settling things on the stand so she doesn't open any doors? Asia didn't give a damn. I think Amber was the one that was probably giving direction to her lawyers and they were probably just like, uh, I don't know. I, I think she was the one that took the reins, man. I think they probably tried helping her. They probably tried coaching her, but I don't know. I don't know if she really even listened to them. She did so bad on the stand. Horribly bad. I think um, maybe her... Um, maybe having Johnny lose the UK case, I think that just like I don't know that like went into her ego even more. Like all the things that have happened in the past like six years, where they got a divorce, she did the TRO thing, took a picture, the public felt bad for her, they felt sorry for her, people were on her side. She did her like you know press release tour, talking about being a you know a victim of DV, um, the UK thing, getting Aquaman. Like I think it was just all going to her head, and I think she probably had an ego that was probably the size of I don't know a fucking whale or something. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think she was the one that was probably calling the shots. I don't know. That's what I'm assuming. But that's a lot of assumptions that I'm making. All right. So back in open court, Mr. Depp, just to remind you, my question was, what's your response to Mr. Mandel's testimony that you do not spend very much on charity? Answer. My response is that Mr. Mandel is a very bitter man. And the one thing about me, myself personally, with regard to charity donations, sending money to a charity, I would prefer, I don't want, I wouldn't want that. I would rather that my name was not on it. I don't want to be the name to be the important thing or the thing that people talk about. So when I donate, I donate without my name being involved because I don't see that that's important. My name being there in terms of money. Now, if I'm able to visit hospitals, I'm able to make a meet with Make-A-Wish children. I've held on to the relationships that I held on to within the Make-A-Wish Foundation and the Children's Hospital and the various, various other places. And obviously my name is involved. When we had the premieres in the Leicester Square for several films of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Objection, Your Honor. This is again beyond the scope of a response to Mr. Mandel's testimony. Ms. Myers, I believe this is a response to Mr. Mandel. The court overruled the objection. Johnny Depp continues. 
basically when it was a public, let's call it a donation or whatever. I would talk to the studio. I would talk to Disney. I would talk to Warner Brothers. I would talk to whoever the studio was well before the premiere and make the premiere a benefit that would, once we did, we benefited, we did a benefit premiere for a great Almond Street Hospital. We did a couple of benefit premieres for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I mean, if you can turn a premiere with that many thousands and thousands and thousands of people there into a benefit, it works and it helps, but it wasn't presented under my name. You know, it was Disney doing this or Warner Brothers doing this. I'm not looking for the pat on the back as it were. If I can make it happen, great, but I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need the adulation. I don't need the attention. Oh man, if it was Amber Heard doing it, she'd probably have her name plastered all over it. <laughs> hey, Sam, how are you doing today? Question. Did you hear Ms. Heard testify that one of the charities she donated a portion of your divorce settlement to was Children's Hospital of Los Angeles? Yes. What was your relationship with Children's Hospital Los Angeles? Objection, Your Honor, irrelevant to the issue. Maybe your pressure, Your Honor. Your Honor, this is a different rebuttal point. This is Mr. Depp had a previous relationship with Children's Hospital of LA when Ms. Hurd selected that as one of her places to make a donation. Ooh, and I bet you surely chose it just to make a jab at Johnny Depp. And I think we saw her statement about the donation when he donated the money to Children's Hospital of LA. She said this was a newfound interest in the charity. Mr. Rottenborn, that's really an attenuated attempt to rebuttal. It's not relevant. The court, well, she testified. Mr. Rottenborn, it's not relevant. And also, they brought out in cross-examination of her. First of all, they brought out the statement, didn't they? I believe it was during the cross of Ms. Heard. Ms. Myers, the CHLA came in on her direct, though. Mr. Rottenborn, understood. But the statement that Ms. Myers was referring to, I believe it came on Ms. Vasquez's cross. I'm not going to say I'm 100% certain of that, but I believe it did. Number two, this is the kind of thing that we've been afraid of the whole time, which is they're going to talk about him going to Children's Hospital LA in pirate costumes. And you heard Mr. Chu talk about how she doesn't care about sick kids and all that nonsense. It's totally unrelated. They're trying to get into, you know, to have him say that he marches around in a pirate costume. That's so beyond the scope of rebuttal. Oh, man, they're so scared of this. They're so scared to let the jury know that Johnny Depp actually does things for the Children's Hospital. <laughs> Meanwhile, Amber Heard just lies about donating to them. Eesh. The court, I haven't heard any of the testimony yet. There was evidence in our examination about these issues. I'll allow. Mr. Roddenborn, there's evidence of what? Her donating to CHLA? She's saying that when he made his donation in the area, that's how it was made. Something along those lines. I mean, I guess I don't. I guess if it's going to be like, hey, I gave CHLA in the past, that's fine. But if he's going to talk about walking around in pirate costumes and what a great guy is with respect to CHLA, I think that goes beyond the sort of any sort of impeachment. Your Honor, I think also note that Ms. Hurd's affirmative testimony, she did testify about in her youth volunteering at soup kitchens. This is really, if they're going to bring this in to bolster her character, the court, that's not allowed. I understand. I'll allow the question. Okay, understood. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. They, like, threw that in really quick when Amber Heard went up there to um, testify. She, like, briefly mentioned when she was younger, she would, like, testify. She would um, volunteer at the soup kitchen. It was, like, and it was, like, thrown in so abruptly. <laughs> and they didn't really go into, like, much details about it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Depp, what is your relationship with CHLA? Mr. Depp says, I've had a relationship with CHLA for probably 20 years or so. And what's the nature of the relationship? Well, since you know, sometimes there are make-a-wish kids who are in the hospital there and their wishes too. Objection, Your Honor. Your Honor, may we approach? Next sidebar. Sean Arian, sidebar 16. Okay. Your Honor, this is why. This is the relationship with CHLA. I mean, this is how you can ask limited questions. That was part of the rebuttal. Okay. 20 years. Now let's move on. Mr. Roddenborn. That's kind of the problem with the limited question with him is she can say what happened. We all know where his testimony is going. The court, we're working on one at a time. All right. If I may. Okay. In anticipation, I appreciate that. I was going to ask whether Ms. Heard knew about the relationship with CHLA. Irrelevant. What will be the relevance of that? She testified he was not charitable. I'll sustain the objection this time. Okay. Mr. Ronenborn. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Myers. Mr. Depp, I would like to take you back to exactly six weeks prior to this week, the week of May 21st through May 27th, 2016. What happened in the beginning of the week? Answer, May 21st. Excuse me, May 20th. May 20th. We're talking 2016 here? Yes. May 20th, the afternoon of May 20th, afternoon, evening. My mom made her exit. She's been fighting cancer numerous times and for many years. She fought all the way to the end. And so my mother passed away on the 20th of May. I which does bring instant perspective to one's mind. 
I spoke Amber that night, called her on the telephone, explained to her that my mom had passed, that Betty Sue had passed, and that I felt the best thing we could do was to... Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. What Mr. Depp told Ms. Heard. Ms. Myers. We can move on, Your Honor. The court. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Depp, what happened at the end of that week on May 27th, 2016? May 27th. My daughter's birthday. May 27th. I was not in Los Angeles. I was on the way on tour. That was when Ms. Heard went for the restraining order. And oh, yeah. Also, the day of the Alice, Alice Through the Looking Glass, a film I had done, was opening. Did Ms. Heard know that you were out of town on May 27th? Yes. And how would she have known that? Well, I told her I was going on tour. I mean, that was well established. How long were you going to be out of town on the tour? Two to three months. And does Miss Heard know how long you've been out of town? I don't know if she knew exactly how long I'd be out of town, but it was a pretty extensive tour of Europe. How did Miss Heard's actions on May 27, 2016 affect you? Changed everything. Mr. Roddenborn, objection, Your Honor. Relevance. The witness. Oh, it didn't change everything? Mr. Roddenborn, to this lawsuit, the court. Sir, if you can please wait into the objection, please. The witness, I'm sorry. Ms. Myers, Your Honor, this is one of the key, if you want to approach, sidebar. How they're trying to bootstrap what she said on May 27 to the lawsuit. How what she did on May 27 affected him. That's not relevant. Your Honor, this is one of the key dates in this. And this is the date that the alleged allegations essentially came out. And the allegations that we contend were republished in the op-ed that was published in 2018. The op-ed is understood against the backdrop of what happened on May 27th. Mr. Roddenborn, this isn't a republication case, except their theory is that the tweet is a republication. But 2018, this is not a republication of 2016. That's not what this case is about. That's not the theory of the case. The law does not support that. That's not what the case is about. It's her repeating that we contend are false statements that she made two years prior to. Mr. Roddenborn, that's exactly the point I was trying to make when I walked up here. That's what they're trying to do. That's inappropriate. They're trying to get the jury to hold him. They're trying to get the jury to hold him, Ms. Myers. That's our theory of the case, Your Honor. I think we made it very clear. Mr. Roddenborn, liable for the traditionally immune statements that were made in 2016. Ms. Myers, I think we made it very clear that the op-ed is that the issue in this case is the defamatory statements are understood in the context of what happened in May of 2016. You need to get into relevance. The objection is relevant, says Judd Penny. Mr. Roddenborn, right. Because this case is about the statements made in 2018 and it's not the republication case, the jury cannot find Ms. Heard liable for the statements she made in 2016. That's exactly what Ms. Myers is trying to get to the jury to do this testimony. So therefore, how did it affect you is irrelevant. Yeah, Ms. Myers, your Honor, I think that we've been very clear about what happened in May of 2016 when she made these statements public for the first time. Color how the op-ed was understood by the people. I think that's what happened on that date. The court, statements made in 2018 in context of 2016. Ms. Myers, well, our contention is that people understood the statements in the op-ed to be about Mr. Depp and to imply that he'd been physically abusive because there had been a media circus around Ms. Heard walking to the courtroom in May of 2016. Right? You can just ask those questions. That's not the question you just asked. I'll sustain the objection for now. Mr. Ronneborn, I'll also ask your honor consider, I don't want to say an open court for obvious reason, but admonishing Mr. Depp the next time he makes a, the court, I just did. Mr. Ronneborn, oh, okay, I didn't hear that. The court, I did. Mr. Ronneborn, I didn't want to say that. Thank you. Uh, Johnny Depp being a smart ass. Want to approach. Number 18. What is this one? This one is about the rebuttal witness. So they're going to argue back and forth about a rebuttal witness, something about the photographs being inauthentic. I don't think I need to read the whole thing because it's going to, we're going to get into it in the other sidebars, I think. Okay. So this is about the metadata on the photos. Mr. Murphy says, Mr. Mur Mr. Murphy is um, Amber Heard's attorney, by the way. Mr. Murphy. Yes, I heard that your honor said that he can to the metadata. I would like to know what exactly that means because there's hundreds and hundreds of lines of metadata. And let me just say why this is important, your honor. I just wrote the brief because I was off researching their opposition. It talks about the metadata indicating the photo is three. Your honor, may I have to say, Mr. Newmaster said in this report, literally, None of the photographs in Ms. Hurd's, the court. You can cross-examine that. Mr. Murphy, it's not in evidence, Your Honor. He literally said they're not in trial exhibits, period. So how can he testify to that? The court. Mr. Murphy, we're going to see what happens with the testimony. But I, if you want to get the counsel during the lunch break and see exactly which photos he's talking to, about which one he's going to testify to, Ms. Vasquez, the one that's in his report, Your Honor, part of the disclosure, the court. If you want to get with him, you can work on that. Mr. Murphy, who's my partner in that? Ms. Vasquez, Rebecca. Mr. Roddenborn, would it be possible to get an updated time? The court, 
You can get it from Sam. Let's just announce it to everyone after lunch, okay? All right, all right, bailiff. And now we're at Johnny Depp is being cross-examined by Mr. Roddenborn. And, mm, oh, this is when, do you remember when uh, Roddenborn confronts Johnny Depp with like these text messages? But I think they got it wrong. The text messages were not actually sent from Johnny Depp. It was actually sent to Johnny Depp. And I think no one actually realized that until, I don't know, maybe way later. Murphy, no, that was Nato Hoff. <laughs> Dre says, was Murphy the one who objected to his own question? No, that was Nato Hoff. Uh, that's the one that people keep saying it looks like Roddenborn uh, Jr. Okay. So Roddenborn says he testified to Miss Myers that he would never commit sexual battery. He just testified to me. Those words would never come out of my mouth. I would never say that. It's relevant and it's impeachment. Miss Myers, this is not, there's no foundation to what he's talking about here. The words sexual violence or assault are not in the text message. Mr. Roddenborn, Your Honor, the jury can draw inferences from what they want. Miss Myers, this is not, it's unclear what he's talking about. It's not, Mr. Roddenborn, I'm happy to admit the whole chain. I just figured every other time they wanted to reject those words. So the court, do you want to see it unredacted in the context of the redirect? Miss Myers, I will like that opportunity. But I suspect I would like to admit it in redacted form. Mr. Roddenborn, I was just trying to do a favor, counsel. The court, I mean, it's impeachment to what he said, so I'll allow it. Thank you, Your Honor. So this is a text where... Which one? This one right here. Mr. Ron Ron was like, Mr. Depp, on February 22nd, 2017, you texted Mr. Duders. Right, exactly. Molly's pussy is rightfully mine. Should I just not bust in and remove his hinges tonight? Did I read that right? Answer, you read that right. Yeah. Question. And the one beneath that, you say, I want to change her understanding of what it is like to be thrashed about like a pleading mackerel. And then in all caps, you write, I need, I want, I take. Did I read that right? Answer, you read it right, but I did not write that. Question, okay. Answer, perhaps some other. Question, you wrote every other text that you produced that came in from this litigation, didn't you? Answer, not necessarily. Sometimes you can give people your phone to people and they text. So um, if you look at the evidence, I believe it said it was sent to Johnny, not from Johnny. But I don't think anyone really caught it. Um, anyways, I don't think it was that important anyways. All right, now we're going to talk about the <laughs> same photos, but two different edits. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is bad. All right. So Mr. Murphy says the two photos in the video are not in evidence, Your Honor. The court, if they're not in evidence, it doesn't come in. Depp's attorney, Your Honor, Ms. Mur Mr. Murphy, it's a L blah, blah, blah. Ms. Lucka Rose, correct. But they do. But DX708 is and it's the same photo. Mr. Murphy. It's visually the same photo, but it's not the same. Depp's attorney, it's consistent with your ruling, Your Honor. The court, I've already taken care of that argument. So what part of the video doesn't have a video? Depp's attorney, so he has a different version of the same photo. One that has been through a photo editor, the Photo 3 app, and one that does not indicate that it's been through Photos 3. It just shows back and forth between two versions of the photo. Mr. Murphy, and the basis of my objection is nine of these photos are in evidence. That's, well, it's beyond the scope of your honor's ruling. I understand that. But again, they're showing. I would absolutely object to it being admitted as exhibit at trial because they're not in evidence. I will still object to the demonstra demonstrative, but I'm not sure if your honor's already going to rule against me or not because the photos are not in evidence. The court, but it's the same. It's the same depiction of a photo that's in evidence. It's just not. Deb's attorney, and I'm happy to pull up the defendant's exhibit that's on the same first. The court, all right, we'll see first. The court, I'll allow it, okay? Man, this is when they have to... <laughs> Oh, hi, Dia. How are you doing today? Hi, Shakar. Yeah, hopefully we'll be done soon. And same photos, uh, different edits. Yeesh. Um, this is just some chatter from the lawyers, and it's just it's just wholesome chatter. So I'm just gonna read it. Ms. Vasquez. So a rebuttal witness is Dr. Gilbert. Dr. Who? Gilbert. He's the hand surgeon. He can testify tomorrow morning, first thing. He has a funeral today. We disclosed that he'll be testifying tomorrow. And with that, I don't know if you're going to count time against us. I mean, I would. Okay, well, that's what we have to do. Yeah. Your Honor, if I just may make a brief record with respect to Dr. Collins and then, okay. So first of all, we would like to request an opportunity to amend our designation to allow her to testify. Okay. And then consist, do you want to do a proffer? We can do a proffer. Yes, you can do a proffer. I'm not going to allow her to testify just to testify. So you can just do a proffer. I don't want to count all the times, count and a half, but you're going to do a proffer. I'm not going to count that. Ms. Bredehoff, thanks. Ms. Myers, that's fair, Your Honor, the court. So do you want to do a proffer now? You can submit a written proffer if you want. We can do that now. 
I can add that. Let's go with Mr. Nadehoff's, Mr. Chu, to the circular file. Ms. Myers. The other point we would make is the I understood your honor's ruling with respect to comparing Ms. Hurd's testimony with the photographs, and we would also like to request that Dr. Collins be limited to testify about the injuries reflecting the photographs that are in the evidence that are shown. All right, I understand. I'm going to sustain the objection. You have nothing further tonight. Ms. Vasquez, nothing further tonight. Dr. Gilbert, very short rebuttal witness. Tomorrow, the court. Just give me the final time so I can give them, uh, give them to them. As of right now, don't count the bench conference. Actually, going to add it to, is it 45? I'm sorry. Mr. Roddenborn, 52. 52 minutes. The court, 51. We'll give you 51. 51 minutes to plaintiff sides. You have a lot of time. You've only got one more rebuttal, right? Mr. Chu, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I think you guys are, I think you guys are out, right? Ms. Vasquez, that's called a wishful thinking, Mr. Chu. The court, getting really close. Everyone's starting to get really giddy. Vasquez, nervous. Mr. Roddenborn, I think both sides are ready to, for each other to be done. The court, I'm very happy. I can't tell you how much. Ms. Vasquez, not that you don't love us. The court, I can't wait. Mr. Chu, at least you're not snarky. Ms. Vasquez, I don't think so. I haven't been accused. I haven't yet been accused of being snarky. Accused of a lot of things. Sammy, for the defendant, I think it's one hour, 16 minutes. Vasquez, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is them just counting up the time right now to see how much time both sides have. And then they're going to work on jury instruction. Oh, man. All right. So now we're doing a little bit more rebuttals. And I think, oh, my God, this is actually pretty fucking long. <gasps> Why did I didn't think it was going to be this long. Okay. I think I can speed through this. All right. Sidebar number one. So again, the sidebar, they are still talking about Dr. Moore, who testified for Amber Heard, and they want to have Dr. Um, Gilbert to go up there and testify to be a rebuttal. I think the court says no, because I don't think we ever see them. Um, then we have the sketch artist was in trouble, and Ben Chu talks about Aquaman puzzles. So this part's kind of cute. Mr. Roddenborn says... Okay, so the court says, while you're still up here, just a couple housekeeping matters. The sketch artist yesterday was sketching the jury, so I have that now. Not going to do anything with it. I took it. She knows. She's been notified. She thought she could do it. She knows now she can. I went through public affairs of Fairfax County. They went back and told all sketch artists and photographers no pictures of the jury, and that's taken care of. One thing I don't think I ever put on the record is at the very beginning, the jurors asked if they can have jigsaw puzzles while they're waiting. And I said, okay, as long as they knew what they were for, for obvious reasons, and they would have been doing jigsaw, a fish jigsaw puzzle, and they did a landscape jigsaw puzzle for lighthouses. And then I gave them one that was a life is good jigsaw puzzle, but I'm going to be taking all the jigsaw puzzles away from them. They completed two and they were done with their third, but I think they're going to be they're, They've had a team building exercise there, but I'm going to be taking them away from this afternoon. Okay. I just want to put in the record. If you saw the jurors or later and they're talking about jigsaw puzzles, I didn't think. Mr. Chu, as long as there's no Aquaman, the court, Aquaman or Pirates of the Caribbean, Mr. Chu, those were okay. The court, I just want to get that on the record in case you talk to the juries and they start talking about jigsaw puzzles. Mr. Ronneborn, I hope they can finish the third. The court, they've got about 30, 50 pieces. So we'll see. Everyone says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, like how Elaine did for Johnny Depp. <laughs> she did a better JD impression than I did, I think. All right, now we have Mr. Sorry, Dr. Hughes coming back on Zilstein. Dr. Hughes. Okay. 51 minutes. Mr. Bredhoff. Miss Bredhoff. While we're up here, I'm going to call Dr. Hughes next. After that, can I take a quick break? The only other witness we're calling is Miss Hurd, but she really has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> the court. Well, I'm going to assume that's going to be close. Miss Bredhoff. It'll be right after. Mr. Chu, I think she should wait. <laughs> Mr. Chu. The court says, you would, Mr. Chu. Mr. Dennison. Well, while we're up here and we're talking about Dr. Hughes, this is a rebuttal witness, right? Mr. Dennison, there's no direct evidence from any of our experts about IPV issues or risk factors on IPV. Okay. I just want to make sure. The court, the only thing she's going to rebut... She's going to be rebutting Dr. Curry, and Dr. Curry did testify in IPV, and she couldn't find IPV in the test results. She's going to say specifically what she's going, she's going to respond specifically to Dr. Curry, and nothing else. Just of what Dr. Curry said in the evidence and rebuttal? Correct. On IPV? Correct. Just the factors? My issue is I didn't want another litany of IPV factors. Right. I don't think they have time for that. Ms. Bredehoff, we're short on time. Yeah. 
So I think Dr. Hughes, maybe she does better on the rebuttal and she might have memorized her notes this time. All right, so we landed during the direct examination of Dr. Hughes. I think we might have an objection. Dennison says, there's no evidence, no disclosure in her initial disclosure, any of the subsequent disclosures or about the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder or any other border personality disorder on, by this witness. All she's doing is rebutting what Dr. Curry said yesterday. She's not doing anything from disclosure and your honor allowed them to rebut the testimony to outside of that. She said specifically on this test, you remember the last time this witness testified, I objected. Excuse me, does this count against me on time? It kind of does, but go ahead. You remember the last time we were here with the witness? I object to the person borderline personality, but uh, borderline personality material as being outside the scope of the disclosure. She can't rebut anything she hasn't done herself. She can rebut anything Dr. Curry has done. Okay, I'll sustain the objection. All right, thank you, thank you. Sidebar number five, quick one. She explicitly said that Dr. Hughes misinterpreted her test results. Right, she did. She answered that question, but then she went further. Now she wants to go into further and talk about borderline personality issue. I'll move on. Thank you. So I think Elaine is getting a little bit antsy because they are running short on time and they still have to get Amber Heard up on there um, after Dr. Hughes is done testifying. So at this point, we are wrapping up Dr. Hughes' testimony. Sidebar number six, seven, five, three, two. Sidebar number six. Um, let's see. So... Sidebar number six. Okay. So Elaine says, Dr. Curry suggested that you made a determination that just based on your personal opinion and just on the checklist, a couple of tests that you misinterpreted. Would you agree with that? Dr. Hughes says, I vehemently disagree with that. As I stated to you over 29 hours and 12 psychological tests and reviewing a slew of documents in this case, most importantly, therapy records, interview, collateral interviews with therapists, using all that data that a solid forensic methodological exam looks like. And then I made my conclusion based on the clinical education, professional uh, education, knowledge and training to come with a professional expert opinion. Okay, just to remind, to make sure that you're reminded here, we're, you are qualified in this court, in this case, as an expert in forensic psychology and specifically in domestic violence. And in now, now I just lost it. <laughs> and in the violence, correct? And in trauma, correct? Objection, Your Honor. It misstates the record. If you want to ask again. Yeah, I probably should. You are qualified. I got to find my note. You are qualified as an expert in forensic psychology with specialty in domestic violence and trauma, correct? Correct. Okay. And that was in this case? That's correct. Okay. Now, do you hold the same opinions that you gave the juror earlier? Yes, I do. And do you still hold them within a reasonable degree of psychological probability and certainty? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. So Mr. Dennison goes to a sidebar and he says, the witness suggested that her 29 hours were somehow valuable here. I was hopeful that I could ask whether she knew Dr. Curry has limited total number of hours that she was able to be misheard. I don't want to go into details, but Dr. Curry had a total of 12 hours. You know, she's comparing her 29 hours to her. We're talking apples and oranges. Elaine. They asked for, well, in fact, it was 14. They asked for 14. We said yes. We agreed to the full amount they asked for. She wasn't limited. If she asked for 20, we probably would have given her agreed to that. If she asked for 29, we probably would have agreed to that. We agreed to what was asked for. Yeah, right. If they wanted 29 hours, I don't know, man. There'll probably be a fight. Court says, I'm not going to allow it. Mr. Bretterhoff, thank you. Mr. Dennison, thank you. You'll never see my eyes. Yeah, you will never see my eyes. Sidebar number nine. Elaine versus Dennison for Hughes. There's a redirect. Um, Elaine does a redirect. What is this one? Um, get this one. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. AH on the rebuttal stand, direct examination by Mr. Roddenborn. Let's see what's going on here. Questionnaire, verdict form. Oh, man. Look at this. Look at all this time. It's just going by so fast. So fast. Um, so at this point, oh, I do want to mention this. So you guys know this part right here. Amber Laura Heard has been previously sworn and was examined and testified as follows. Examination by counsel for the defendant and counterclaim plaintiff. 
by Mr. Roddenborn. So I think because Elaine bombed the the redirect, the cross examination, the direct examination um, of Amber Heard, that they're like, you know what? Or maybe she wanted to be excused from it, but Elaine's not doing the redirect for Amber. It was Roddenborn who took over. So they must have all known that she fucked up severely and was like, okay, you know what, Elaine, you're going to have to take a sidestep and we're going to let Roddenborn handle the rest with Amber. Because if you guys notice, a lot of these witnesses, um, if they handled you during the um, direct examination, then in the rebuttal, you have the same attorneys that's going to work with you because that's like, you know, each attorney is like assigned into a witness. But because, I don't know, Elaine fucked up the one when with the, the Amber, you know, they were like, okay, Elaine, you sit down and let's let Roddenborn do the rest. So we have Camille confronts, um, let's see, Roddenborn continues direct. Um, Camille keeps objecting to non-responsive. So at this point, I don't think Amber's even listening to the questions that's being asked. I think she's just trying to get her side of the story in and have it into the record and let people hear. Because <laughs> a lot of times Camille's objection is saying non-responsive, non-responsive, non-responsive. All right, what we got here? Seven, five, six, nine, four. Mr. Roddenborn, what do you hope to reclaim after this is over? Amber, protecting the secret that I did for as long as I know, I've taken enough of my voice, has taken enough of my voice. I mean, Johnny has taken enough of my voice. I have the right to tell my story. I have the right to say what happened to me. I have the right to my voice and my name. He took it long enough. I have a right as an American to talk about what happened to me, to my own story and my truth. I have that right. I hope to get my voice back. It's all that I want. And I said that from day one. Mr. Roddenborn, thank you, Amber. I don't have anything else. Cross-examination. Camille Vasquez wants to approach and she's going to say, Your Honor, my cross-examination is not limited to the scope of what, please let me finish, to what Ms. Hur just testified. It's my position that it doesn't have to be. It's my cross-examination on the counterclaim, which includes the words like abuse hoax. I feel like I'm entitled that I do want to want approach and let you know before I start getting countless objections. I believe it's to the counterclaim. Oh, sorry. The court says it's to the counterclaim. Mr. Rodenborn, I think cross-examination has to be limited to my direct. This is rebuttal, Your Honor. The court I understand, but your direct involved the counterclaim damages in the counterclaim, so she can go into the counterclaim. Mr. Roddenborn, she's already had her opportunity to cross her in the counterclaim. The way the case is set up is they put up their case in chief, we put up our defense too, and that our case in chief on the counterclaim. She's already had the chance to cross-examine her, and this is why it's rebuttal. She shouldn't have a chance to retreat old ground that hasn't opened up in this examination. She's agreed to the chance. Ms. Vasquez, I disagree, Your Honor, because that's my, this is part of my defense to the counterclaim. So to that end, I believe that I should be entitled to my, the court. I'm trying to remember your rebuttal yesterday of Mr. Depp. Ms. Vasquez, it was not limited to the scope. Mr. Roddenborn, well, they opened the door. They questioned extensively. No, they did. They went back a lot. Uh, Australia, what Ms. Vasquez just said, this is our defense to the counterclaim. This was her cross for two days. This is our defense to the counterclaim and their rebuttal. Now, this is just like a rebuttal, just like Your Honor said, the closings you told me at the pretrial conference. When you get up there to do your last closing, it better be limited to that. Same thing. This has to be directed to my direct examination. Your Honor, Ms. Vasquez, I disagree, Your Honor. Mr. Ronneborn, she had her chance to direct the court. I agree. Your examination, or I understand, your examination was damages. Ms. Vasquez, right? The court, you agree. This is about damages, how it affect you. Mr. Roddenborn, yeah, it's all damages related to the counterclaims. If there's relation to the talking about we don't have those damages because you can get into that. She can't get into, including the abuse hoax. Mr. Roddenborn can't get into the evidence of whether it's a hoax or not. She has that two days, whatever, day and a half to cross-examination. Your Honor sustained throughout the whole trial. Scope objections during cross-examination. So scope is limited to no. Yes, let me understand. She's had a... Yeah, I understand. I'm trying to figure out what the scope can be. She said these are all damages I had. I think she's allowed to say, well, aren't your damages actually related to? She can point to that. Right. Fair. But if she's going to say, here, let's play the recording of you two. Let's talk about what happened on the island. Ms. Vasquez, this is about our rebuttal case. No. Oh, sorry. Court says, no, it's their rebuttal. Mr. Ronneborn, it's my rebuttal case. Ms. Vasquez, I'm just saying my examination. The court you have to tie the rebuttal to the damages. You're saying this is a part of your damages. Well, isn't it true about this? Ms. Vasquez, right? The court, this is actually the reason those were damages and might be some other evidence that comes in. Ms. Vasquez, right? Mr. Roddenborn, what she wants to do, if she does, is to say that she hasn't suffered damages because she didn't commit a hoax. And if she's going to get into the facts, it's not appropriate. Ms. Vasquez, I disagree. Mr. Roddenborn, this is our rebuttal. See, she's confirming what she wants to do. She's had her chance. 
I disagree. The court, we can't go back. The defense is right about that. Ms. Vasquez, Elaine was a match. She was a frazzled match. Did Deb and her go back to court? No. Hi, Christine Buckingham. How are you doing today? We're reading all the sidebars. So the sidebars is when the attorneys talk to the judge and we didn't get to hear anything. And uh, now they're in the transcripts. And yeah, we're just reading everything that's happening just to see what happens behind the scene. So Ms. Vasquez says, how about my rebuttal case that just came? May I just briefly, Your Honor, so we put a rebuttal case and included a new testimony to rebut Ms. Hurd's case in chief. I believe I can ask her if certain testimony evidence that came in for rebuttal relates to her counterclaims, which includes the words abuse hoax, includes the words fake sexual violence. This is her case. They're interrelated. The court. Now we're just in rebuttal evidence. Ms. Vasquez. But it's related to the counterclaims, Your Honor. I believe I can cross-examine her on the counterclaim statements. The court. I understand that. But this is a base of rebuttal. It's only rebuttal to her defense and damages right now. That's all. They're rebutting in their case. They're rebutting your case as far as damages. It's hard, but it's a defense. So you put on the evidence and she was damaged by whatever else um, issues, right? And the other occurrences, so she can do other issues or other things that's happened that affect her damages and not these statements. The court, uh, Mr. Ronneborn, they cannot, the court, they can't. But what Camille is saying, she wants to get into things like the testimony from yesterday, Beverly Leonard or TMZ. Yes, because it relates to the damages. Mr. Ronneborn, it doesn't. Camille, yes, it does. These are stories out there. I let you finish. I'm sorry. I should have addressed her. This is my rebuttal. They finished in their case yesterday. My view is going to those things. They ended their claim, which is don't relate to those counterclaims. Those are just related to smearing Ms. Heard. That's not appropriate for neither side at this point. It's certainly not appropriate for her to go into. If they want to go into, they weren't damaged. The court, she did testify that these statements are the reasons that she was damaged. Right. Mr. Ridenborn, the counterclaim statements. The counterclaim statement. So if they want to say that these statements weren't true, Ms. Vasquez, isn't it true that, right, or isn't it true that what damaged you wasn't the counterclaim statements? It was Beverly Leonard's testimony, you know, and the other things that happened being publicized. The court, in the rebuttal, opening the damages, she did testify that I just want Johnny to leave me alone. I mean, she did testify to more than just damages, which was objected to. I didn't stop it, but she did testify to more than that. She was saying these statements... And then she said her testimony in the trial, Your Honor. So she opened it up, Mr. Roddenborn. And I'm so, I'm glad we're up here because Ms. Vasquez is making clear she wants to go into testimony throughout the whole trial. Ms. Her testified on direct for a day and a half. I don't know. Ms. Vasquez got to cross-examine her on all that. This is what we're going to do, okay? You're going to limit to just whatever evidence from your rebuttal case. Understood. That's the only thing I tend to do. The court, we're not going to go back and rehash anything that we did back before. Correct. Just in the rebuttal case. Even though that, Your Honor, they rested, so they rested the court. You put her on the stand. Mr. Roddenborn, I did, but you're right. I didn't ask her about Seattle. That's totally inappropriate for them to base on the questioning. Then Mr. Vasquez gets to go and ask what Miss Beverly Leonard testified to, or what more can Tremaine, the TMZ guy, testified to. That affects her damages. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. There's stories out there. She just said, Mr. Roddenborn, something happening in 2009 is going to affect what happened in 2020. It's already been down the road. They've already asked these questions. Miss Vasquez. Now, since Ms. Leonard testified, she's asked her about Seattle. You already, you've already been very carefully limited. I'm not going to talk about a police officer or arrest. I would never do that. No, you prescribed the questions she should, could ask. She answered them already. Well, that's, that's fair enough. Let's talk about Seattle. Understood, Your Honor. I will take them out. The court. I, what else do you have in your rebuttal case? TMZ, I assume? Yeah, TMZ, Hicksville. That's fine. TMZ, yes. Hicksville, because of the one guy saying that he... But the damage is in the trailer. The damage is in the trailer. Yes. I mean, that's fine. I still think it's inappropriate. Kate Moss. Oh, sorry. Camille Vasquez. Kate Moss, the stayer story has been publicized all over the world. That's, we finished that, Your Honor. She testified it was a rumor. Kate Moss got on the stairs and said that he didn't push her down the stairs. I'll allow that. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. May 21, the photographs that her expert today, May 21, the photographs that were taken at the exact same time, the exact same uh, second. Mr. Roddenborn, she asked her, Hold on, please. Taking the exact same time and the exact same second. She said that she only turned on one vanity light. I feel I'm entitled to ask her about that. This is exactly why the internet, according to Mr. Depp, is questioning her testimony. The court, she did bring up the internet. Ms. Vasquez, she did. Mr. Roddenborn, no. The court, she did bring up the internet. She talked about the testimony in this case. She talked about the damages being from this case. Your Honor, I think it's fair game. Mr. Roddenborn, so the question, May 21st, Your Honor, May 21st is so far attenuated from what is limited. She's had the chance to cross her. She put the two pictures in front of Ms. Hurd already. Not with the metadata and none after the expert testified that they're in different pictures. Uh-oh. The court, I'm not going to allow the pictures. I think you're right about that. Mr. Ronneborn, you're not going to? The court, I'm not going to allow the pictures. Ms. Vasquez, 
So no pictures of Mr. Neumeister? No. There's a discrepancy, Your Honor. She testified the same photograph relates to two different incidents. She did not. Ms. Vasquez? Yes, she did. There's a picture of a wine bottle inside one of the penthouses, actually. She previously testified as related to the May 21st incident. When she's on the stand, she tells Ms. Bredehoff in redirect it's the same photo from a different incident. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. Ay, ay, ay. When you lie and you forget what you lied about, it's hard to keep track of your lies. Oh, we are almost done, y'all. Almost done. Okay. Ronald Board says she did not. Ms. Vasquez, yes, she did, Your Honor, and I'll show it to Ms. Hurd. Mr. Roddenborn, she didn't. Ms. Vasquez, there are reasons that the internet, if you want to call them sleuth spots, I don't care what you call them. People on the internet and social media says that she claims to damage her career at the direction of Mr. Depp. There's a reason. It's because there's inconsistencies with her story. She did bring up social media. She what? She did bring up the social media. What are the boundaries? What are the boundaries, though? That Miss Vasquez gets to show stuff that's all going to be hearsay. She didn't bring it up in hearsay. She just referenced the threats that she got. That's very different than Miss Vasquez having those people who are paid. Is oh god, we're all paid. Ah, pay me, Johnny Depp, pay me, Miss Vasquez. Harassment, threats, calling her a liar, Mister Roddenborn. So what is Miss Vasquez supposed to do? Show her these internet sleuths? No, of course not. Just the discrepancies in her story, Your Honor. That I submit, Your Honor. That I submit is actually what's causing the damage in her career. It's not. Her PTSD, it's not Waldman statements. She talked about PTSD also. Right, it's not the Waldman statements. It's, a discrep it's the discrepancies in her stories that people are calling her out on. Yes, Camille saying the truth right there. That's what that's what damaged her career. It's her, 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 her. Not, not everyone else, not Johnny Depp. Mr. Rodenborn, she's trying to use this as an end run to get in what you've asked the jury not to check for the last six weeks, which I'm not sure the court, she said it. Mr. Rodenborn, she said she got threats. Ms. Vasquez, she said a lot more than that. She said, my testimony in this case, Mr. Roddenborn, does not open the door. The, the court, it opens quite a bit, Mr. Roddenborn. See, I was so surprised too when Amber Heard was up there testifying and then she started talking about the internet and people judging her and social media. I was like, what the fuck? She's allowed to testify about all of this? Uh, I wonder if Elaine and Roddenborn told her not to and she did anyways. <laughs> or maybe they didn't warn her. Okay, Mr. Roddenborn. Okay. Oh, sorry. The court says it opens quite a bit, Mr. Roddenborn. Mr. Roddenborn. Okay. But it doesn't open to just an unfettered right to say all these things that are out there that are just false by people who haven't heard any of the evidence. We, okay. By people who haven't heard any evidence. I feel like this case was such highly researched and all the evidence was out there. It's like people who keep saying, oh, they didn't have access to evidence. Oh, they didn't look at everything. No, a lot. Of, oh, come on. We did. I mean, there are people who probably just watched like bits and clips from like maybe bites from the trial. But a lot of us, come on, we watched like the whole thing unfold and it was just a shit show. The court, then why did she bring it up? She did. So anything that's tied to damages, we're not going about 2009, anything that's tied to damages. Right. I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to allow her to do it. That's, I just think that we have a disagreement on what damages because Ms. Vasquez appears to be wanting to question her about the whole case. Now, I have a few topics that are only raised in our rebuttal case, just raised in the rebuttal my entire examination is based on the rebuttal case. We're not going to do the police officer. I'm not going to go to Beverly Leonard. Am I allowed to go into Kate Moss? I'm sorry. I lost track when I was. And the reason, Your Honor, is because Mr. Depp testified yesterday that he told Ms. Hurd about this incident. I'll allow that. I think I already allowed that. Thank you. TMZ, TMZ, we're doing. I'm not going to do the Brian Neumeister in the pictures. May 21st, the fact that the ties into TMZ and the publicist was there. That's fine. At the courthouse, the wine picture, like I said, the notes and the discrepancy. All right. And just the people that test in rebuttal. I have a brief line of questioning, 10 questions of that. Do you want to repeat who those are? Hicksville? I'm not going to talk about Miss Leonard. Hicksville, TMZ, no issues. Experts. I'm not talking about Brian Neumeister, your direction. All right. Okay. I had a question. This went viral, Your Honor. Isaac Baruch testifying and crying and weeping about what Miss Heard did to him and did to Mr. Depp. I think that's fair game. Mr. Roddenborn, that's five weeks ago. The court, I'll allow it. Damages issue. Okay. I don't know how much time you have left, Mr. Ronenborn. You had 23 when you came up here. Ms. Vasquez, we're splitting this up equally. Mr. Ronenborn, I would just say for the record, I think they arrested their case. I think it's inappropriate to go beyond what was direct and maybe a couple more minutes. I'll find out. And Sammy will email you. Oh my God. They're so nervous, dude. They're running out of time. Okay. This is where we get to the juice. Camille confronts AH with using the same photo for different incidents. Um, and then Roddenborn and Camille will agree to something. 
Don't we like it when lawyers agree? Isn't it so nice when people get along? 7, 6, 14, 11. Okay. Camille asks, and do you see what your testimony reflected in May 21st, 2016? Answer, yes. And that follows? Yes. Now let's turn to page 4804 at line 14. 4804, starting at line 14. Yes. Through 805, line four. Go through what? Line four at 805, 4805. Do you see that you're testifying the defendant's exhibit 725, which is reflected on the right side, reflects spilled wine on the floor in penthouse five? That's correct. And the defendant's exhibit 512, 725 seems to be different versions of the same picture, don't they? That's correct. Okay, so which is it? Which one was taken on December 15th, 2015 or May 21st, 2016? If you remove the redacted metadata, you can find out. It's right there. It's so funny how she doesn't want to answer the question. <laughs> answer the question. Or if you're telling the truth, you would know. Recognize a portion of spilled wine on the floor and I'm supposed to know off top of my head when you live through five years of this stuff? I don't think so. That's not how that works. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Miss Heard, at the beginning of your cross-examination last week, Your Honor, may we approach? Your Honor, the snickering from the gallery is extremely distracting. I totally agree with Mr. Roddenborn. It's inappropriate. There's someone sitting in the aisle. I believe it's my side. Do you know who it is? I think it's the lady, the blonde lady in the third row. And just generally speaking, it's, I agree with Mr. Roddenborn. I'm going to admonish them. We can agree on that. Yeah, looking at us, getting along, what I'll do is I'll admonish the gallery. Do you want to skip back? I've already, it's safe to be seen. <laughs> like Camille was just poking at Mr. Roddenborn. <laughs> oh man. Could you ima imagine Camille Vasquez and Mr. Roddenborn skipping back together to their tables? <laughs> now they're just being silly. I feel like the Ben Chu silliness does rub off on the rest of his associates. She says, do you want to skip back a sight to be seen? The court. All right. What I'll do is I'll admonish the gallery right now. Tell them if I hear another word, I'll just clear the gallery for the rest of the testimony. Ms. Vasquez, I have like only five minutes left, Your Honor. The court. I'll take care of it. Court says, ladies and gentlemen in the gallery, I would ask there be no words, no phrases, no words, no sounds at all coming from you. If I hear one sound, I will clear the gallery and we'll continue this testimony without anybody in the courtroom. Understood? Good. <laughs> okay. They get along. Um, last day, May 27th, we've got, oh my God, closing arguments day. Okay, we're almost done, we're almost done. Dude, Ben Chu, Ben Chu gets really spicy during these sidebars. He calls, um, he calls Spiegel a wackadoodle and, uh, he accuses Elaine of lying multiple times to the jury and he says this directly to Judge Penny. So we got arguments going on today. Uh, ben Chu's doing a closing argument and Mr. Roddenborn is going to object. So let's see what Ben Chu says. 778417. Ben Chu says, before Amber Heard, ladies and gentlemen, no woman ever, no woman before Amber Heard ever claimed that Mr. Depp raised her hand to her in his 58 years. And no other woman says Ms. Heard made the false claim back on May 17th, May 27th, 2016, and has and has repeated to her December 2018 op-ed, has any woman come forward since? This is hashtag me too without any hashtag me too. To the contrary, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Kate Moss two days ago testify. This is a woman who has never testified to any proceedings ever in a private person. Testified a very private person. Testified that Mr. Deb never abused her and that Ms. Heard lied to you. She lied to you twice when she told you. Objection, Your Honor. You want to approach? Sure. Mr. Ronenborn, absolutely misstates the evidence. That's way beyond argument. You didn't let him ask that question of Ms. Moss. Mr. Chu, when she suggested twice that she stares, but it was involving the stairs. Correct. That's what I'm going to say. That's what he was going to say. Okay. Open court. All right, now Elaine tries to get the UK judgment in again. Uh, oh, Elaine, trying to be sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Elaine tries to get the UK judgment in again. All right, Elaine says, the first of those, Your Honor, wait, sorry. Okay, so what's your issue? The first of those, we believe the arguments on the damages and the restoring the reputation has opened the door for the UK judgment. No, definitely not. Evidence is done. Okay, Your Honor, the second thing is I just saw, while Mr. Chu was arguing, I think we made a mistake in both verdict forms. On the last, I think you'll appreciate it as well. Sorry, Judy, last day. You're going to have to take Judy's mic out. She's never going to forgive me. 
I wonder what is Elaine doing with Judy's mic? Is she like yanking onto Judy's mic or something to talk to um, the judge? Because uh, this has been a couple of times that <laughs> this has been a couple of times that Judge Penny has talked about Elaine possibly fucking up Judy's mic or something. I don't know what is what was Elaine doing with the microphones, man? Elaine says she's never going to forgive me. I believe this word should be any instead of all. I think this is does requires to find all three. Okay, so you want us to change the last page? So if you answer yes to all the questions, to be any? No, all the questions. Well, and all in the questions in one, all the questions in two, all the questions in three, or Mr. Roddenborn, one, two, three, four, the court. You see what I'm saying? I can explain that to them if you want. Ms. Bredhoff, I think that would be helpful. At the end, I'll explain that to them. That means you have to answer all the questions because I think it works. You created the form, right? Mr. Roddenborn, yes. So I'm correct, right? Yes, that's correct. The or. I'll explain to them, make sure we have it right. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you, did you want to break into that too? Ms. Vasquez, I don't think so. It's still on, so it's a good thing. Mr. Chu, keep laughing. It's my fault. All right, so they're going to take a little breaky. Um, now we have Elaine during, uh, doing her closing argument. And Elaine, I'm going to back it up a little bit for Elaine. Elaine says, the first one's come, and you know, we've talked about it. We've shown you the pictures. The police officers admitted that those pictures could very much have had what was there that night. Remember Officer Haddon? It was his first week on the job. Officer Science was three years on the job at that point. They say, you know, they tell Josh that if she will press charges, she, if she'll give them a name, we can file a report and make, an a rep or, uh, and make it an arrest. She wouldn't do it. You did hear from Detective Sadanaga. That's a domestic violence. Objection, Your Honor. May we approach, Your Honor, says Mr. Chu. Mr. Chu says... She blatantly misstated the testimony of the police officer. The police officer said there's no sign of injury. There was no arrest she needs to correct that. Josh Drew testified that the police officer told him she's got a mark on her face. That's property damage, you know. The court, was that an evidence? Yes, that was. Mr. Chu, no, no, and it's not, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, no, it did make it into evidence. Mr. Chu, the police officer said there's no sign of injury. The court, well, I know the police officer. She just said Josh Drew. Ms. Bredehoff, no, 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 no. Josh Drew. Josh Drew's came in. It came in. Mr. Chu, I don't believe that's correct, Your Honor. The court, I know what the police officer said. It came in through Josh Drew. The court, well, I'll allow it. Go ahead. We'll correct that. Oh, Mr. Chu said, we'll correct that. Now, Ben Chu straight up accuses Elaine of lying. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so Ben Chu is accusing her of lying. Lying about what? Elaine says, Elaine says, uh, 7906. Okay, Elaine says, now let's go to the third one. Oh, let's talk about the makeup just for a moment. While we're going to the third one, this makeup thing, the fresh face, natural. These were Adams Waldman planting these when he talked to the ECB people. Remember the testimony here? Did you talk to Mr. Waldman? Did you talk to Mr. Waldman? Mr. Waldman was trying to plant in all these people's minds. Mr. Chu, objection, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, that somehow she wasn't the court. If you can approach, Mr. Chu, she's completely misstating the testimony here. I don't agree. She just is. I don't agree. None of them said that they were planted by Mr. Waldman. They all said this is a truthful statement. She's just lying. I'm not lying, Your Honor. There. She is lying. Well, no. We asked specifically about Adam Waldman. Your Honor will recall that. And they said that I don't remember. Yes, I did talk to him. Right. But nobody said that he planted these statements. No, the, I did it. And I didn't say that he planted it. You just said that. I accused him of planting it. If you could just clear that up. Okay, it's a thanks. What did she say, actually? She said, these were, <laughs> this makeup thing, the fresh natural, the fresh face natural. These were admin Adam Waldman planting these when he talked to the ECB people. He literally did say that. She literally did say that. Man, the judge has such a good memory. I feel like if I was ever a judge, that'd be so hard to remember what everyone's saying and to get it all right. Jesus. Whew. All right, Elaine. Ben again accuses of Elaine of lying again. All right. Ben, 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 he is on fire today, the court. Um, sidebar number five, seven, nine, 10, 17. Okay. Elaine says, 
Now, obviously, the defamatory meaning of that is Amber's creating an abuse hoax. But there's no abuse hoax. I don't need to tell you of all the evidence because Ben did a beautiful job of just taking you through all of those different things. But I will point out a couple things for you. And as remember Bonnie Jacobs, the therapist, Dr. Hughes, Dr. Spiegel testified to Bonnie Jacobs' notes. And remember I was holding that, you don't get to see them, but they're testified that they went through them. Dr. Hughes testified that she also spoke to Don, Don, <laughs> Bonnie Jacobs. She kept contemporaneous notes from 2011 when she starts seeing Amber and the abuse documented those notes. It's what Dr. Hughes testified that they started in 2012, both physical and sexual abuse. And you know, the thing was, remember how Amber heard went back on the stand and was like, hey, actually, you know what? I forgot that the, the first abuse that happens to you, you'll never forget it. But I just actually forgot. And I went through the doctor's notes and I just remember that the abuse actually happened a lot earlier. <laughs> All right. So Ben Chu says, objection, your honor, Ms. Bredehoff. Dr. Hughes testified to that. Mr. Chu, may the court says approach. Court says yes, sir. Mr. Chu, she keeps misstating. She continues to lie to the jury. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not misstating that one. She continues to lie and misstate the evidence. Which lie do you say there? That was not the that was not in the testimony. Oh, it was. It absolutely was. It was not. Well, what do you believe was the testimony? Dr. Hughes testified that Bonnie Jacobs' notes documented both physical and sexual abuse. She also said she talked to her and confirmed that was the first day of her testimony. I just don't have the transcript, so I'm not sure. Mr. Chu, that's not accurate, Your Honor. She continues to do this. He can argue whatever he wants, but that's absolutely what she said. She can't, li she can't lie to the jury like that. And then I asked Dr. Curry about that. What was in the notes, whatever? I know she reviewed the notes, but what was in the notes? Did that come into evidence? Mr. Chu, no, it did not. No, Mr. Chu, <laughs> Mr. Chu, no, it did not. Ms. Bredehoff, yes. Well, her, the court, I'm not sure the notes. Characterization of it, not the actual notes did. Characterization? Ms. Bredehoff, characterization. Dr. Hughes said these things were in the notes. Her characterization of them? Characterization of them, right. That's not actually in her notes. Mr. Chu, correct. Ms. Bredhoff, no. She said, no, she said that she, Mr. Chu, she needs to correct that. She continues to lie to the jury. Ms. Bredhoff, she said the notes reflected physical and sexual abuse. She said that. That was her testimony. She did. That is not in evidence, Your Honor. I don't recall that. She absolutely did. I mean, she absolutely did. The court, you can use that she characterized it as such. I don't know that you can actually say that it was actually in there. Mr. Chu, yeah, she misstated that to the jury. No, I have not misstated. Yes, you did. Ms. Bredehoff, I have not submitted my testimony at all. It's very important evidence from us because we can get those notes and we tried several times. She's saying it in the evidence when it's not. She's saying it's in evidence when it's not. The court, well, she did characterize the evidence. You can say characterize the notes. Ms. Bredehoff, thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, so... Dr. Hughes specifically characterized Dr. Jacobs, Dr. Bonnie Jacobs' notes reflecting both contemporaneous physical abuse and sexual abuse throughout the time period. Dr. Spiegel confirmed that later and said the same. When I asked Dr. Curry if she had reviewed those notes, she said yes, but she had not comment. Mr. Chu, your honor, objection. Ms. Bredhoff, and she did not acknowledge that it was there. The court, all right. Mr. Chu, wackadoodle Spiegel did not say that. <laughs> And it's funny how Elaine doesn't even dispute this because she knows that, you know, she probably knows that Wackadoodle Spiegel was a good name for him. And so she says, Wackadoodle Spiegel did not say that. The court, Dr. Spiegel didn't say that. Mr. Chu, could she please correct that? Mr. Bredhoff, Ms. Bredhoff, yes, I, he did. Mr. Chu, no, he didn't. The court, he said he reviewed her notes, but he didn't say anything. He didn't characterize her. Elaine, I just said he confirmed. The court, but he didn't confirm. He just said, I reviewed the notes and said nothing about that. Dude, they're so fucking desperate. They're trying to get in this fucking notes thing. And they're like, I, I don't know. Elaine's just literally just making up people's testimonies at this point. I don't know, just making shit up. <laughs> it's in the evidence. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, it's not in the evidence. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. This, is, this is some desperation here. All right, Elaine says, I just said he confirmed the court, but he didn't confirm. He just said, I reviewed her notes and said nothing about that. Mr. Chu, would you please ask her to retract that? The court, I will. So Elaine retracts it. And I don't know if she actually does a good job at retracting it. 
Uh, next is sidebar seven. Uh, uh, something about pledge versus donations. Ay, ay, ay. Continue to... Oh, this might be a... All right. Eleven. Is this the way lane? All right, I think this is still way lane. Now, we have the plaintiff's exhibit 936 in evidence. Look at page 69. It says how, he, how much he made in 2015. It was $43 million. Remember, Doc, Mr. Spindler, Depp's expert, he said that he made $22 million in 2016. So if you got $65 million, Amber was entitled to at least 31.5 at least. That doesn't include all the take back ends from Pirates, Pirates 5. She was entitled to that money, but she didn't need to say anything. She could have said, I don't like you anymore. I don't like the color of your hair. I'm going to divorce you. Indiscernible due to a cross talking. Mr. Chu, Your Honor, we're going to object again. Mr. Chu, she's making legal conclusions. It's quite clear that Judge White had ruled very early in this case. We're not litigating divorce here. She's telling the jury her legal opinions of California divorce law. Ms. Bredehoff, this is what Laura Wasser testified to. No, it's not. Listen, we can make this argument, Your Honor. You can make arguments if they're in evidence. Ms. Bredehoff, there are. Mr. Chu, no, they're not. Ms. Bredehoff, Laura Wasser. Laura Wasser, yes, they are. Laura Wasser and Michelle Maroney. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but this is going against our time because we've already had a tough time. Mr. Chu, you're already out of time. <laughs> oh, no. Ms. Bredehoff, I mean, he's already done this three times. Uh, okay. The court, we won't count the sidebars. Ms. Bredehoff, thank you. Mr. Chu, Your Honor, it's not in the evidence. Ms. Bredoff, it is. You wouldn't let that into evidence. Oh, I absolutely got that in. Mr. Chu, we did a whole deposition designation. It was ruled very early in this case. We're not relitigating the divorce case. I'm 100% certain that. And she's wrong on that lawsuit too. Ms. Bredoff, it's in Laura Wasser's. It's in the Michelle Moroni's. Laura, Laura Wasser was at no fault in the community property in here. Michelle Moroni has a community property in there. I know. I heard about the community property. She's saying she's entitled to 31.25. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ms. Bredhoff, right. And we put the tax returns in and Spindler testified to the amount. So you do the math. It's 31. So, but yeah, you do the math. Right. Mr. Chu, she's, she's making Ms. Bredhoff. But we even have acid in cross-examination in one of them, the 31.5. I mean, this is, I'm entitled. She's making, she's telling the jury to make those arguments. A falsity about the application of California law. No, that doesn't take into the account the it was elicited. Depths are assumed by Mr. Depp. No, Wasser, this is Judge White said very early on, we're not relitigating the divorce case. Ms. Bredehoff, no, you don't take into the account debt. The court, we're at the end of the, we're, we're at the end of talking about the divorce. I'm near, yes. Okay, all right. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm doing the motivation here. The court, all right. Okay, I'm going to move on, but I'm entitled to that. I understand. But if you're going to do the calculations, you're going to let them know this is a mere inference from the evidence that's in. That's fine. And then we'll go on from there. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Elaine wasn't listening to Judge Penny about sidebars. Okay. What did Elaine, what did, how did Elaine fuck this up now? Let's see. Elaine. Elaine, sidebar number, number nine. Where is this? We won't cut the sidebars. Sidebars. Okay. Oh, this is just a quick little convo. <laughs> All right. The court says, and just for the record, plaintiffs have 39 minutes left for the rebuttal. Defendants have six minutes. Mr. Chu, thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, Your Honor, can we just get those back from the sidebars? The court, I didn't take any time from the sidebars. Zero off the sidebars. It's all from testimony. So you remember earlier how Judge Penny says that she wasn't going to take any time from the sidebars? Elaine wasn't listening. <laughs> Elaine don't like to listen, okay? Elaine just off in her own la-la land. Okay, so this is the last day. Um, this is actually two days later when the jury finally came back in with the verdict. So we have sidebar number one. Um, really not too much going on, so... The jury deliberated for, how long did they deliberate for? Was it like nine hours or something? Seven, nine hours? You guys remember? And remember how um, the jury brought in the uh, the verdict stuff and then they had to go back because they didn't actually put the number on there. So 
this is just the part where Judge Penny makes a comment on that. All right, sidebar number one. Our last sidebar, guys. This is our last sidebar. Shall we celebrate? The court says, on one of the forms, they found for defamation statement, but they didn't put in anything down for compensatory nor for punitive damages. So I need to instruct them that since they found for at least one of the statements, they need to put that down. Now I can either write it down or they can just, I can just tell them and send it back. Mr. Chu, tell them. Ms. Bredhoff, I just tell them. Mr. Chu, I think you just tell them. The court, I'm just going to tell them that they have to, on the last page, they find defamatory statements on the last statement. They have to put, they have to put an award compensatory damages of at least a dollar and they have to either put zero or number in for punitive damages. Elaine, right. The court, does that sound fine? Does that sound appropriate? Mr. Chu, that's fine, Your Honor. Ms. Vasquez, that's fine, Your Honor. Everyone says, fine, fine. Thank you, thank you. And that's it. That's it for the sidebars, y'all. We're done with all the sidebars. 27 days of sidebars. <laughs> 27 days of sidebars. Well, actually, I guess 26 days because I didn't read the sidebars for the jury day, though. Um, I guess I should have read that. Day one was when they um, did the jury questionnaire and all that stuff. Um, I didn't read it, but it was mostly just juries just giving them excuses why they can't attend jury duty. That's about it. And yeah, we're at the very end. All right. So what do we learn from the sidebars? What do we truly learn? Did Elaine perform better behind closed doors? Did she just fumble up when it was in front of the cameras, in front of everyone? No, I think she did worse than the sidebars. Okay. The sidebars with Elaine was just like, it just showed what a true mess that she was. Um, <laughs> ay, ay, ay. What a true mess. But you know what? I'm sure this was a huge learning experience from her and all the stuff that she learned from this case, you know, dealing with Judge Penny, dealing with exquisite lawyers on the other side. Um, you know, I, I hope she'll take that and she'll learn and she'll be a better lawyer in the future, you know? But uh, we're at the end. Oh my God, we're doing the sidebars. Jesus, okay. All right, guys. I was going to talk about the... Um, Ooh, I'm gonna skip this. I was gonna talk about the um the donations and all that because I forgot that Elaine Elaine was Amber's lawyer back in the day um when the UK thing was happening. Remember during the UK trial, uh the verdict came out. Um Justice Nichols sided with the the Sun, the newspaper company, and said that there's no way that Amber Heard could have been you know doing a hoax because she donated her seven million dollar settlement, and when Johnny Depp's team came out and was like, hey, you know, we don't think she donated the money. Like, we want to appeal this. There's no way that she donated the money. Um, and then it was it was Elaine that came out and said, oh, you know, Johnny Depp and his team, they're just bringing up the divorce settlement and the fact that she didn't donate because they're just trying to sidetrack from the verdict that came out, blah, 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 blah. But then it actually was leaked that she didn't donate her a full amount, that she only pledged and she donated like a little tiny bit to some of the... Um, I think she, it wasn't really even her donating. I think it was like, it was like Elon Musk that did the donations, but it was Elon Musk that donated. And it was like not even close to the $7 million at all. But, oh man, I just wanted to, it was Elaine that came out, you know, attacking Johnny Depp and his team. And <laughs> look at this, all this just came crashing down in her face, man. I don't know. I wonder how many times her client lied to her. How many times did her client lie to her? And then they had to scramble behind the scenes and try to, fucking fix everything you know i just felt like there's so many times where she probably lied to the lawyers and uh, she threw her lawyers under the bus remember how she kept saying that like oh you know there's pictures of my nose being fucked up from you know this one time that johnny hit me and camille was like that's not an evidence and she's like well i gave it to my lawyers i don't know my lawyers my lawyers i don't know and then elaine's like i don't i don't know what picture she's talking about i mean there's plenty of pictures here but i, I don't know which one so fucking crazy fucking fucking wild all right y'all that's about it for today's stream uh, if you guys miss any parts of today's stream i will have this uh in the stream that will be available and then i will probably just re-upload it and try to take out any like side conversations or like usually the beginning and stuff like that but anyways yeah i know towards the end elaine was probably just like what the fuck was this what did i agree to <laughs> so i'm sure she's probably a lot happier now she's probably you know she's no longer amber's lawyer and i'm sure she's gonna live her best life okay all right y'all thank you so much for hanging out i um, appreciate you guys being here thanks for having me in the background if you guys are multitasking thanks for chatting i appreciate that um here are my socials instagram um i also stream on twitch as well if you're gonna stop by say hi i play video games on there I've been playing Bowder's Gate lately, and it's, ah, oh, it's so fucking good. Ah, oh, it's so good. 
But um, when I'm done with Baldur's Gate, I do want to watch like true crime uh, docs on there. So if you guys want to join, feel free and um, join the Discord if you guys want to. This is the Discord. We have a true crime section. You can post in there or post cute pictures of your pets and notifications are on there as well. Also have your notifications on. All right, guys. Um, if there's any like true crime story that you guys want me to cover, let me know. I think I want to, I kind of want to cover one. Uh, I want to do some like background research on one and kind of just like cover it. Not like court, not like all court documents and court footages and stuff like that. But like, I actually want to just like, I don't know, just cover a story from beginning to end. But I don't know which one to cover. If you have any uh, recommendations, let me know. The best part was when maybe Ron Moore acted like he was like in the papers before. <laughs> That's probably one of my favorite edits. That's probably one of my favorites where like, Amber Heard was hugging everyone. He's like, please, please don't notice me. Oh, oh God, please don't. <laughs> I know, it was just really funny. Anyways, um, I hope you guys have a good one. Take care. I will see you guys later. And, um, oh, just quick update. Um, Brian Koberger has waived his right for a speedy trial. So remember how I was saying that I don't, I don't know. I feel like Koberger's and Sarah Boone's, they're both scheduled for October 2nd. I felt like it wasn't going to happen. It was like, it felt way too soon. There's too much going on with the Koberger stuff, too much going on with the Sarah Boone stuff, drama with her lawyers. So Koberger has whipped straight to a speedy trial. So uh, yeah, it's, we don't know when the trial is going to happen. And then Sarah Boone, um, I don't know if the lawyer responded, sorry, if the judge responded yet, but Sarah Boone, um, Sarah Boone's sixth attorney has asked to withdraw. And he basically told her to just find, be your own fucking attorney, represent yourself, which I thought was really snarky. And I was surprised he wrote that in a court document.